So, last we left off, you all were preparing to do that request for Esma, the follower of Lothic. And when you met her again, it turned out that she had a Mind Flayer friend, and that what you're dealing with appears to be a Mind Flayer colony that's being led by a my, an Elder Brain. So with that in mind, you all decided that you need to prep for this, especially for its mind reading powers that can go up to 5 miles. So Dante learned the non-detection spell and cast it on all of you before you're going to the place. And then everyone else bought some psychic resistant potions. And I think there are a few other things you all bought. I'm not sure anymore. Like, whoever was keeping stock of that, please, like, say if there's something I missed. But anyways, you prepared for this journey, and you went to the Underdark. You tried to sneak around, but got caught by a really strange creature. It's like a tentacly floating eyeball, and it has eyes on its eye stalks, and yeah, it just looked really, really weird. And then as soon as that happened, Cephalosk said that you've been detected by the rest of the colony, so you all tried to run the hell away from there. And as you were, you encountered some Mind Flayers and its thralls, and you managed to defeat one. But the rest ran away. Everything else is dead. The thralls are dead. It's like Intellect Devourer is dead, although you don't know it's called an Intellect Devourer. And um, that is where we left off. So the scene right now is Cephalos, Asma, and your battle bro companions. They're all there. They're all kind of like drained from that encounter. And yeah, you're all alive. And there's no threats present at the moment. However, Cephalos does say... Yeah, and at the end of the session, they, all of you decided that you're going to keep on going forward. So that's yeah. the, yeah, that's the important bit. And with that in mind, Cephalosk actually gets busy right away. He tells all of you that I'm going to be, um, I'm going to need a few minutes because I'm going to be ingesting the brain of the thing that we just defeated. You. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Um, you won't be around for an hour unless you want a short rest right now, because none of you have had a short rest yet, I think. Like, I don't be... think I got an indication that y'all wanted to short rest. I'm okay, but we can short rest if others need to. I... Will it be? I'm okay, sad, like... But I feel like we need to, like, move, constantly move. But yeah. if you guys really want to short rest, then that's fine, you know, like... But I feel like, let's move. Unless... Uh, wait, uh, no, Dante, I don't do think, think we have time to short rest, like a full short rest. Okay. Okay. okay, so okay. so we're we're running. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll I'll also um DM. I'll also use my ever smoking bottle to create smoke screens and also like create like distractions and other like tunnels. You know to draw any like just to trick other like you know parts of the hive into thinking oh they're there they're there why is there smoke there you know <laughs> why is there smoke there. Okay, yeah. let me read the description of Ever Smoking Bottle real quick, because I don't know how long the smoke lasts. It might be ineffective if no one passes by there. Okay, ever Smoking. I'll look into it as well. Yeah, I know that it can go pretty wide, reaches its maximum radius of 120. The cloud persists as long as the bottle is open. Hmm, the cloud disperses after 10 minutes. Oh, okay, it lasts 10 minutes. Oh, that'll do it. Okay. Hmm. So this is really tricky. I'm not sure what to do for this one. Make a... Hmm. 
I guess this would be deception. Make a deception check for me, Rico. Okay. Um, let's see. I think this will be in contested with an intelligence check on the part of the mind flayers, because they are smarty boys. One... On the other hand, they're not familiar with magic, so... Yeah. I guess they'll roll it with disadvantage, if that's the case. Was... Oh, yeah, with magic... Deception, okay. That's, uh, 13. <laughs> oh, 13 is not bad, dude. Okay, so just a intelligence check for these boys. Thirteen. Oh crap, you're all the... Okay, no. Okay. I didn't realize your deception is so low. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not proficient with it, and uh... Oh no, that's a twenty. That's not wrong. That's not right. That's supposed to be the twenty. Oh, well. I rolled worse. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> you kind of noticed that on some parts of the places where you spoke, like a few seconds later you hear that sound that happens just before a mind blast happens. Nice. So, <laughs> so like, you know, you, you've caught some people's attentions and they feel a little confident about themselves, but then they didn't find any bodies, so they're like, what happened? <laughs> Where'd they go? <laughs> Where'd they go? <laughs> Okay, and um, by the way, I think the eye, so like, you're doing that, right? And then, yeah. um, Cephalos actually proposes that you split the party, and like, you know, this is so that um, we can make it so that, you know, the battle bros aren't here today. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, this is the only time splitting the party makes sense. Yeah. So Cephalosk asks, between all of us, like, which ones are going to be splitting? So, you know, mm -hmm. you can decide who's going to be going with the battle bros. I suggest, um, I suggest the battle bros go in that direction, and then the three of us go in this direction. <laughs> and then, uh, Asma, you go with the... Battle Bros and Cephalos, you come with us. Okay, and Cephalos also just says that uh, very well, but be warned if any of those creatures take away my ring of mind shielding, I will no longer be your ally. We understand. <laughs> Alright. If you understand, then okay, let's get going. So. Cephalos, after devouring that Mind Flayer's brain a while ago, he, after a couple of minutes, is able to like gain some of its memories. So right. it kind of knows where the Elder Brain might be at the moment, since this is just a memory. So yeah, you kind of know where to go at the moment, so no need to like do any survival checks or anything at the moment. I asked um Cephalos like if they take away a ring and but we managed to put it back on, will that help or is it like like you know a helpless? A no go. Yeah. Is it helpless? Um, Cephalos, has, Cephalos will be honest and he'll say, I have never tried that before, but however, if you do have a chance to do so, it is worth a try. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously never tried this before, because once he put it on, he never took it off. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. And, um, let's see... So the Battle Bros and Esma, they said that they're going to be focusing on rallying the orcs. So Esma will bring the Battle Bros to where the orc, where the orcs are kind of like holed up and saturated. 
Okay. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that objective anymore. Okay. And um, I'm gonna ask uh, I'm gonna ask my two party members. What do you guys think of me? Um, when we in case we encounter any um more mind flayers or the elder brain, what do you guys think of me casting greater invisibility on both of you? Think. Oh, so think that's a great idea. idea. Or, or do you prefer like being able to see each other? I don't know because some of you, we're all spellcasters and we need to see each other. I guess. So, what do you guys think of this plan? I'll still be able to see. Okay, good, good. Okay, what about them? This is like a question. The um, if I cast it on Senna and she wants to cast healing spells on us, will it, will it work if? Both of us are invisible. Like, would she cure wounds us while we're invincible? Invisible. Or... Well, I have, I have healing words. So, I, does it's that here. work? Like, as long as, oh no, a creature of your choice that you can see. So mm. it still needs to be. Uh, yeah, you still uh, need to be able to see the person. So invisibility okay. is great. But it's also like not super great because yeah. you can't target the person anymore. I was thinking I cast the greater invisibility on both of them. And then I remain visible. And then, you know, like, they need to heal me, they can see me. <laughs> so, Philosoph, for the most part, agrees with that plan. Because, let me see if I can find the Elder Brain stats again. I, I'm wondering if it relied a lot on sight. And that's the thing that I'm wondering. I don't think so. Because I think if. An elder brain is just a floating brain, right? So I, unless it has like eyeballs on its brain, I don't think. I think I think you mentioned there was an eyeball, like with stalks, uh -huh. right? Oh, okay. Never mind. He tells you an elder brain has a blind sight of one twenty feet, so it doesn't matter. Whoa. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's um, that's assuming that you go for the elder brain, though. If you're just yeah. gonna be fighting mind flayers, then that's gonna be a little more effective. Right. Got it. That's it. Well, yeah. I, well, I tell um, I tell Cephalos, Well, let's try to go for the elder brain if we can risk. Uh, if we can like give the mind flayers another chance, you know, to make their own choices. Then I think. It's a nice, you know, alternative. He I guess. says, yeah, and he says, indeed, that would be ideal. Or I'm not sure if all of these mind flayers are truly doing things of their free will. Yeah. And if they are doing all of this, then we'll kill them. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, we shall kill them. Yeah. All right. Oh. Okay. He does go ahead and mention though that your best chance of killing the elder brain before it just plain shifts the hell out of there is if you surprise it. That's gonna be really hard considering it has blind sight of one twenty feet. Yeah. Uh, I I tell the others like. I actually ask my party members as we're running, like, do you guys have any um any uh, long distance spells to hurt it from afar? From this specific distance. Uh Cinna shakes her head and she says, All I have is dispel magic. It's hundred and twenty feet, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, we'll still be in range. Can uh can any of us? No, no. Do any of you know counter spell? Maybe we can prevent the <laughs> elder brain from plane shifting if we have that. Because I don't have that. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting thought. I have counter spell. I don't. Uh, oh, you they have ask counter okay. spell. Okay. With um... that in mind, Cephalos says, "Interesting." In that case, you need to be near the Elder Brain just before it escapes. Okay. I can close the gap with a teleportation um, spell. 
and uh -huh. uh, if it tries to plane shift away, I can counter spell. Okay. On when when they decide to do that. I don't know if this can help in any way, but if things get really bad, I could try to banish it to another plane. I, I can't hold it for long if I, could, if I could banish it. But if I did try to banish it, just try to set whatever you can up in its place so that once it pops back in place, back in here, you're ready. Okay. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. Cephalos does say, though, it will be unlikely that the Elder Brain is on its own. It will be guarded, even if the other Illithids are going after us right now. Okay, in, in that case, I will cast Invisibility... Hmm. I'll cast Invisibility on, on both... Uh, on both Dante and Cephalosk land, just so just so that like nobody singles out Cephalosk and like Dante can, you know, sneakily attack people. Then me and Senna we can stay close and like uh, try to you know draw their fire. Uh, yeah, Cephalosk reminds everyone. Ideally, you do not stay together, as evidenced from the previous fight. Right. True. Right. 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 It's okay, Senna. Um, we'll stay far away, but I'll try to like help from a distance as well. Same. Yeah. Indeed. While you and I are invisible, Rico Bishop. Actually, did you ever reveal your names to him? I don't think he ever asked for it. Actually. Um. Yeah, I'll say my name is uh, Alan. I I'll say I gave him my my name. I, uh, by the way, I told um, I clarified with Cephalos, like, no, I meant like, Don, you and Dante will be invisible. I'll be like, oh, my bad. Invisible. Dante and me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> the two, the two people who are most likely to get their brains eaten are invisible. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Sina absolutely was. Uh, Sina absolutely was very friendly with. Um, Cephalosk and uh, tries to like she like puts out her hand when she introduces herself to him. Oh, there you go. And um, yeah, if you ever did shake his hands, it's super slimy. It got your your gauntlets all messed up. Yeah, she like she waits for him to like not look, and then she looks at the gauntlets like the fuck is this? <laughs> um, and she keeps like trying to wipe it on her cape like. Is this gonna rust? Is this gonna rust? So oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I am. Um, okay. I ask also Sina, like, how is your shield, by the way? Um, is it enchanted or is it a normal shield? Um, it is. Doo -doo -doo. I think I put Blessing of the Forge on my uh, shield. Okay. So, yeah. Blessing okay. of Forge, yeah, uh, imbuing magic into weapon or armor, so yes. Okay, good, 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 okay. Uh, I think we're, I think we're good, like, uh, yeah. is there anything else D we need uh, to, like, DM, um, or, um, yeah. DM, um, during that, that few minutes that Cephalosk used in our short, short rest, can Dan... Uh, Dante have casted comprehend languages. Mm, as a ritual? Yeah. Uh, Eleven minutes. Oh no, sorry. Ten minutes to cast it. Ten minutes. Oh well. Okay, hold on. Let me roll something for that. Ten minutes casting. I mean, are you gonna commit to that for the entire ten minutes, or as soon as some indication of something bad might happen, you'll just get the hell out of there? If uh, an indication of something bad will happen, I'll just use a spell slot. Ah, okay. Okay, let's see if you save this spell slot or not. So, 
Mm, what is your percent chance of that happening? I'll say, I'll say 60 ish percent. So here we go. Oh. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to use that spell slot, my dude. That's okay. a 76. Okay. So, like, you're going to do it, and then. I think Rico was already starting his ever smoking bottle stuff, and then after you heard the sound of a mind blast, you're like, okay, we can't wait here. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. Yep, yep, yep. I also took the time to convert two first level spell slots into sorcery points. Okay, so you have two more sorcery points. Yeah. Got it. Anybody want to use their like pearl of power or something before you get into this? Any items you want to set up? Uh, Any spells? Sina, Sina looks at Rico and Dante and she's like, um, I don't really know if we would need a planar ally right now, or should I probably ask for one's help later? Um, I don't want to risk uh, d our friend Dorothea over here, but if worse comes to worse, then yeah, maybe cast the spell. Oh, I just oh. have a, I, oh. I just have one handy, and she like pats her like choker necklace, um, because oh. she has like a bead of planar ally. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's just a bonus action to cast. That's right. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. But. I'm not exactly sure what to ask of it. They can be pretty snobby sometimes. So I like to propose <laughs> my, uh, my request at the top. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm, if you, if, okay, I think it's a good idea. What, what do the rest of you think? I'm just not sure what to ask of them other than like, could you look ahead? Could they could they help us in combat? But if if they can look ahead, like that'd be great as well. Like information is also just as useful. Let me see. I think they can help in combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you um Here you go. sizable donation of gold or this. magic items. Yeah. Yeah. We can I mean, you, you have a bank of like magic items that you might want to dispose of. Yeah. Um it's uh it's measured in minutes required of payment. So um Sin is like, you know what, I'll just wait for us to meet some of those uh, illithids or the elder brain itself, and then I'll probably release it out. Mm. I don't really want to spend end up be going into debt debt of like 10,000 gold pieces. <laughs> that is true. We could also pledge a favor for it like you know, if it's a celestial, I'm sure it can it can accept like favors as a payment as well. But we will we will cross that um conundrum when we face the elder brain. All right. Okay. Okay, so I have a question. So now, do yes. you have an entity that is like loyal? Hold on. Do you have an entity that you know? Because it has to be a being known to you. That I know. Hmm. Let me think. Because off the top of my head, no. <laughs> okay, but like, okay, so you know Dorothea. That one's a given. Yes. You've already seen Dorothea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know you're god, so there's that. A god, a primordial, a demon prince, or some other being of cosmos. I'll, 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 I mean, she definitely is aware of, like, Moradin, because that's the god that she worships. So yeah. I would say that maybe, um, I don't know, like, perhaps. Like the, one of the planetars? Yeah, planetars, the... yeah. The lesser deities of that pantheon, of the Dwarven pantheon. Yeah. Archon? Archons? Archons. Ooh, Ooh. the Archons. Or, I don't know how what their stat block is, but it sounds really cool, a Hammer Golem. Because that Ooh. seems pretty... I don't know what the Hammer...
Hammer Golem is here. I don't know. I just I just looked it up. Hammer Golem. Is that a thing in more than Cadence? I wonder. Oh no, it's water dungeon of Mad Mage. Bloop. Oh well, shit. I don't have that. It's fine. Don't worry. It's like a plan. We can do Planetar. Yeah. Or like an Archon. Yeah. Okay. Planetar or an Archon. Just make it a a a short looking Planetar. <laughs> like a dwarven well, one. <laughs> dwarven Planetar. Even dwarves can be Planetars too, people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there is no height discrimination in Planetar. There's no Yeah, as a celestial, but they don't discriminate. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Planetars goodness. are like bald and un and like clean shaven but these dwarven planetars they have a full beard somehow yeah it, and it's like got braids and everything in it yeah my goodness is this really a six level spell you can summon a cr16 monster jesus christ <laughs> i mean uh. as long as you know it i guess you know like yeah because we we did summon dorothea with this spell as well and i personally knew him so you know what, sure. I'll say that Sina, in her time, has met the or Planetar you, once. <laughs> or you could say a Deva. Yeah, that's Deva. true. Mm, I mean, I'm okay with it being a Planetar. A Planetar okay. is more involved than a Deva, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Planetars act as the weapons of the gods they serve. Yeah, that sounds more up your alley, I think. Like, you would have been more likely to meet a Planetar than a Deva. Okay. Yeah. Up as divine messengers. Oh. Huh? You're more likely to meet a weapon than a messenger. All right. I am. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. So you do have a planetar ally. Whoop whoop. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. And then what? What are you going to give that planetar in exchange for its favor? A high five. Um, I don't know what what it will ask, but Sina like um, Sina can offer to craft it like a magic weapon. <laughs> Damn it, Dante! Uh, craft it a magical weapon, huh? Usually, you have to give the thing right after the service i don't know if you can ask for it to be af like a couple of weeks later let me see Task hey, my well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> if the task is aligned with the creature's ethos the payment might payment might be halved or even waived or a favor Sina can do with a favor yeah, I can also, yeah. Okay, I guess that's up to you once you summon it. Anyways, okay, so, you have your plan. Okay, and Cephalosk is like, you can do that? I'm also surprised, like, when did you know a planetar? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a funny story, um, but then she, like, waves it away, like, now's not the time. It's a really long one. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, wow, suddenly this battle is looking to be a lot easier than I thought it would be. I didn't know you have a planetar up your sleeve until today. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Um, Cephalosk and y'all... I guess Cephalosk would be leading the way. He ate the brain of that other mind flayer. So, yeah. Okay. Head there, head there. Then... Along the way there, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna roll something here. Four. Oh, we already did four, so... I keep rolling four on the d4, what's up with that? The best number. Is that a good thing? It's the best mm -hmm. number indeed. Ah... Okay. Oh, that might be complicated. Okay, so on your way to... Along the way, the Elder Prey decided it wants peace. <laughs> <laughs> so along the way, you're in this 
let me see if I can find my map. So you might fight hands. Okay. Alright. So along the way, you're in this like watery part of the cave. There's like water down the middle. Yeah, you're on like a watery pathway and like kind of in the cliff. Sorry, not in the cliff, but like in a trough of sorts. You haven't really found a way above water right now, so it's really muddy and sticky and crappy. You're pretty sure there's some guano around your boots right now. Ew. Yeah. Water also doesn't look very nice. It looks like a sickly green. Ew. Yeah. It's gonna take forever to get out. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. It's okay, I have prestigitation. Maybe it will clean it away. Uh, All right. But the memory... <laughs> the memory will be with you forever. <laughs> Um, I don't think anyone has like any detection spells up right now, no? So no. that will be aware. I'll cast um detect magic right now. <laughs> I mean yeah sure, you can cast that as many times as you like, that's fine. Yeah. So there's that and then let's see. How much is your stealth here? Let's go with and finally use Martin Cannons, this is nice. Yeah. Um, the highest passive perception here is Rico's, right? How much is your passive, my dude? Right now, I believe it is 20. Oh, wow. That's crazy, man. Mine Does is anyone nine. have higher than 20? I have 9. nine. That's... Oh uh, yeah, 20 for me. What's nice. wrong with you guys? Oh my god. <laughs> Nothing can get passed by them, my dude. We are daredevils, you know, and she inherited my um uh, perceptiveness. <laughs> um while while they, uh they were walking and stuff, um Cinna does tell uh Rico like, you know, Rico, I was meaning to tell you earlier, but I mean I I was raised to believe that gold dwarves were the pinnacle of races in Faerun, and we were here for millennia, and we've been dedicated to crafting things of, you know, uh, legacy and beauty. But I also know that mixed metals create stronger, tougher alloys. So how can one race stay supreme for so long without embracing change? And I guess this is just my way of saying that, and I'll probably be in major trouble with my daddy for saying this, but it's a good thing that I'm related to you. And I'm honored to have you as a very distant uncle, grandfather, grandmother. Right. Um, I love very, this interaction right now. It's very sweet of you, Sina. I'm, I'm just really glad that there are still remnants of my original family. Or that I was uh, the reason I was searching for answer for her descendants was because I just wanted to see reminders of 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 my humanity and and I'm glad that um whatever happened like my family was able to carry on through you you know so yeah I'm glad to uh be relate to have you as a descendant as well you're very talented well, we if all... you ever find your way back to Coltar, uh, the families are going to be super surprised, but we make amazing food, super spicy. So you're more than welcome to come for a family reunion when I'm, when I return and I'm not disgraced. <laughs> that's, my father's I'm not disgraced. that's very, that's very kind. And, um, I will help. I'll try my best to help you get back to their good graces. You know, like I'm a knight and you know, uh, honor and grace is like a thing with me. <laughs> uh, I hope it's a thing for my family too. And then, uh, yeah. Alrighty. So, um, can all of you go into the map? No, I'm. Well, can I get the link to the lab? 
Oh, there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> we on the left, right? Or on the right. You'll be spawning on the right over here. Okay. Hey, neutral party. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, this the, map you was can see sponsored how by Neutral Party. party. Thank oh you, Neutral Wait, Party. I, I I paid for I know I think two months of Neutral Party. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, for real? Yeah. Oh. You should, if, if I had known, I would have given you my Underdarks. I have them in my folder. <laughs> Dang, I'll send okay. you the rest. <laughs> Easy, good. Oh, that would have been so appropriate right now, but it's okay. <laughs> Oh, you're preparing your mirror image. I see what oh. you did there. Uh, my oh. ethereal make form. Sure you... I'll make sure you guys are near me so that I can cast greater invisibility by touch. Okay. Um, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Shuffleosk, mm -hmm. where are you, Shuffleosk? Oh, so... Shuffleosk, you should be near me, so. Oh yeah, hold on. Shuffleosk, where are you, bud? There you are. Cephalosk. The real Cephalosk is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> God damn it. You guys should be like on the river side, so up on that cliff. Because this is a cliff, by the way. So the ah, cliff, okay. cliff kind of looks like Are we 10 feet. on the south side or the north side? No, you're on mm -hmm. the river. Oh, we're on the river? Yeah, you're oh. like walking past all of the dark, the green looking sickly liquid. Uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, this was the only path up until you can see the cliffside over there. And then also like what seems to be a platform that you can go up if you mm. want to. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um... So, on top of your high passive, my dude, you also detect some magic over here. And you also oh. notice this uh, figure over here. Oh my god, it's a drow. <laughs> Indeed, it is a drow. And you kind of see that it's trying to sneak, but then didn't notice that you noticed it already. And it's so weird because, like... Normally, you wouldn't be able to see this, but because you can sense its magical aura, it's like you can't unsee this, unsee this like creature right now. So I, just... I mean, hail there. Uh, right now, it's just waiting, and then you said hail there, Dante. Yeah. We mean you okay. no harm. Our quarrel is not with you. She's a bit surprised that you were able to notice her, so she thinks that the jig is up. So let's see here. Mm -hmm. I try I to would... say like, I try to like, you know, we're no wait. We mean you no harm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay. I think everyone here would know a bit about Drow. Um, especially Dante, because Dante is fascinated with elves, so... Uh, you know that they're a race of slavers, and that they oh. love inflicting pain and misery on people, especially surface dwellers. Oh no. Yeah. But you did say that your quarrel is not with them, and she's a bit impressed that you're able to detect her. So she kind of like stands up. Now you all can kind of see her with whatever vision you have on you. So typically I know that, um, that Fatal was the one who was your light bearer, but who's your light bearer right now? Um, I, I can do that. I'll use the Gem of Brightness to, as, a, as a flashlight for everyone. Okay. Right. Then so, I can also cast light on her um, uh, hammer. Nice. Hammer. Okay. So, well, she speaks in a language that you don't really hear very often. Does anyone understand Undercommon? I casted Comprehend Languages earlier. Okay, so you comprehend this. You can't speak it though, but 
who does know under common, if anybody? Uh -oh. Not me. Nobody? Okay. So you only understand this, Dante. You won't have an easy time speaking to her. Mm. So she says, Well, well, well. Not many are able to detect me right before they get killed. You mean us no harm, do you? What is your business here in our territory? Dante will respond, but he'll respond in Elvish. Ooh, okay. Dante will say... I'm not sure if you know this, but your territory, as you claim, is infested with mind flayers and an elder brain. Has this not caught your attention? She says, Ah oh, yes, we're aware of that pesky pest that's around here. It has done us no harm so far. Not yet. But much as you are slavers and you enjoy tormenting others, they are the same. And if you claim them to be pests, it won't be long that they will infiltrate more and more of your territory. Consider us your exterminators. And if you will help us, it will make everything all the more smooth. She kind of like cocks her head to the side. And why would we need help from filthy land dwellers? From filthy surface dwellers, rather. If you truly think of us so low, we would have already been dead, no? But clearly you were impressed by us, and I... By the way, does anyone else in the party understand Elvish? <laughs> Because, like, it's just Dante and this girl talking back and forth in Elvish right now. Uh, Cinnabar Rico, do you understand Elvish? No, Cinna's just, like, whispering at Rico, and she's like, Boss, what's going on? <laughs> Dante is trying to um, uh, use diplomacy here and try to use that um, slavery to work with us. And we could use all the help we can get. And I, I include Cephalos in this convo, and I'm like, can you understand them, perhaps, Cephalos? So Cephalos surprisingly does understand. Oh. Yeah. It's from all the brains he's eaten. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, or it could also be that he was elven at one point in his life. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so Rico, you understand Elvish? Okay, that's nice. Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't. I um... he's assuming that that's what's happening. Oh, he's just assuming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the last just responds like, yes, that he is indeed trying to parlay with this one. Um, Dante just you know says that um, if you think that we are so low, you we would have been dead already. But clearly, you are impressed by us, and I assure you. You have not seen the limits of our capabilities yet. She ponders for a second. Well, if you're going to be exterminators of these pests, then fine, go ahead. But whatever happens after you've exterminated, well, we shall see. Uh, Dante turns around gonna... and tells the rest of the party what just happened in common. She's not going to help us? Uh, well... I believe it... her letting us live is her way of helping us. We could... Then we will take that um, common de decency and, and we'll push forward then before she changes her mind. <laughs> <laughs> Before she changes her mind. Co it's common decency not to kill people. Is that what that yeah. is? Yeah. <laughs> like the bare minimum? <laughs> Just the bare minimum, you know? Just the bare minimum of helping, you know? We'll take that help. <laughs> it's a good thing it like, stopped that encounter. She was not below CR. <laughs> nice. um, 
Good job, good job, everyone. Okay. Good job, Dante. Good job. Thank you. It's too bad, though. Like, oh man, I was hoping she would help you. Together. Okay. So that encounter was avoided. And, oh man. So I just really want this encounter to happen, so it's gonna happen. But along the way, you also like see a really weird looking monster. And you've seen a lot of weird monsters in this place by now. Mm. So, um, let me see if I can find a picture on it. And that monster is... Um, so to describe the monster while waiting for the photo, um, it kind of looks like a jellyfish, but a really <laughs> alien-looking jellyfish. Oh, wow. I did. So... Oh my god, is it, um... Is it a flump? <laughs> Do you know what that is? I'm so proud of yeah. you. This is this is what happens when you spend time as a DM. You just kind of are familiar now with monsters. <laughs> so proud of you. But then none of your characters know this, by the way. So yeah. As far as you're yeah. concerned, it just looks like a freak of nature. I'll be like, what's that jellyfish doing? Maybe it's friendly. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> you just assume that it's friendly. Everything here has not been friendly so far, FYI. Yeah. <laughs> I have this like insane like optimism now, so I'm like, you know, maybe it's friendly. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's what you see. It's not colored blue right now. Right now, it is colored. Let's see. Colored red. <laughs> hmm. Let me just think about its occupants. So green. Actually, it would be colored red. Uh oh. Yeah, it's colored red at the moment. Cause, uh, That's why I thought it was friendly, because I was like, oh my god, my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite color. Maybe it's friendly. Dante uh, stops in his right. tracks. And... Uh, looks over to... Uh, Cephalos. Cephalos, what is this creature, and should we be worried? Yeah, this is a friendly. Uh, Wait, no. Hmm. Do you have ever encountered one in his colony? Let's roll for that. Oh yeah, that's really high <laughs> on his intelligence. Okay. He says, Ah, this is good. Although it is looking unhappy at the moment. Oh, it... Is it just me, or does it look sad? Oh no, it is not sad. It is oh. very much mad right now. Why Why is it upset? Is it because we're around? No, it is most likely because of its last meal. Oh. Uh, and then he kind of explains how flumps work a little bit because all of you are stopping on your tracks right now. Yeah. So, tells you that these f things, they're called flumps. And th these flumps, when they're colored red, they're angry. Um. And some things that can cause them to be angry are violence, or violent thoughts, or violent emotions. And... Um, he mentions that first because the way that it sustains itself is by feeding on psychic energy from others, but not like how, not like how mind flayers do. How these ones eat, how they sustain themselves is like they parasitically eat your psychic energy, and you don't really feel any negative effects. It's not like you get a headache or something. You just do it, and you don't really feel anything. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. no wonder it's got it's it's angry. It's got a bad stomach because it's just been feeding on horrible things like grumpy ass drow that don't help people. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cephalos says, "Precisely, little one." 
So mm. I think if you want to make it feel better, if that is your goal, then you just have to allow it to digest your thoughts. Happy thoughts. Can you do that, Dante? I cannot. You must do it. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I like how straightforward Dante is. Oh, I am not happy. <laughs> I am not happy right now. <laughs> I don't think you're aware of 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 maybe. I think you just. I think. I think you need a hug. <laughs> we we can we can have the hug later when we exit the the underdark, okay? Or a weighted um... blanket. Cinnabar, <laughs> 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 only your brain needs to... your your brain is the only sustenance the flumps need. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like I Cephalosk. If you are completely wrong about this, my Dwarven ancestors will haunt you for the rest of your life. Including me. Oh, yes. Including my grandmother, grandfather, uncle over there. So... <laughs> uh, he, says, he just kind of shrugs because he's like, who cares? I'm not going to die. <laughs> uh, Sin is going to step forward towards the flump and then she'll just keep saying, think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Um, new grease. Um, mama's cooking. And then she starts like enumerating things that makes her happy. <laughs> These are All a right. few of my favorite things. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rico, do you want to participate in this feast? I can. I can participate as well. And uh, I start also thinking my own thoughts, like playing chess. Escaping the shadow fell. My parents. My oh. wife. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet, dude. Yeah. Most recent thing is gonna be nice. Alright. So, okay. Flumps uh, kind of like are red at first, and then they register all of your presence. Um, Cephalos hangs back because he fears that uh, he's been fe it, they've been feeding on mind flayer psychic energy, which also doesn't make them feel good. Yeah. So, he hangs back for a bit with Dante. I think you're also hanging back, Dante. Like you don't want to be seen by yeah. these creatures right now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then, yeah, they kind of like turn green for a minute. They're just like. If you've ever seen a, a jellyfish like be curious, it's like one of its tentacles go up to its like disc area. You know, <laughs> scratching kind of, the head. Kind of, yeah, scratching their beard sort of, you know. <laughs> so they turn green for a little bit and then Cephalosk says that, oh, this is good, this is good. They did not stay red. <laughs> then, um, they kind of like... Uh, Move from side to side a little bit, and then they kind of like just shake up and down <laughs> the both of you. <laughs> and then um, from their green color, they are now they're now looking like a soft pink color. Mm -hmm. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> looking like a soft pink color, and then they kind of like share their thoughts with you at the moment, because this is also part of the process. So, um, the first thought that you get is that these Mind Flayers have been around for a while, and that they're planning to like really expand right now. In fact, one of their one of their Mind Flayers, it's a bigger, it's a larger Mind Flayer, larger than the ones that you all have faced. Oh. And it's planning to travel real soon, like far and away from this colony, its own, its own place, and he's thinking of expanding there. Okay. Yeah. So there's that, and then, um, yeah, it also gets like you also get some thoughts of some drow that are some people from the surface a lot of them are dwarves a lot of them are elves not so many humans for some reason 
And um, mm. yeah, they've been bringing them back to their citadels somewhere deep in the Underdark. Okay. Yeah, and then finally, there are some thoughts of dark dwarves. These dark dwarves are um, pillaging and raiding drow and other dwar other like brown dark dark dwarves alike. Um, yeah, and then they would sometimes be going up to the surface to rob people off of off of all of their possessions and stuff, and then they come back over there. This for you in particular, Cinnabar is such an annoying thing, but then you see that the dwarves are like creating really ugly ass looking um, weapons and armor. They look more f they look purely for function rather than for form or art. Wow. Yeah, and it seems like they're mass producing these things. Uh, Sina, it's all, uh, like she's feeling a little annoyed at the seeing the craftsmanship yeah. in her mind, I guess. <laughs> in her mind. So yeah, like it, all of these thoughts come crashing into you as the flump. You feel like it's effectively dumping all of its negative vibes at you at the moment. So <laughs> yeah. So you get all of the negative memories and it kind of like feed off of your happy memories in a way. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then um, that's kind of like what happened just now. So the thumbs are kind of like dancing around right now being pink. Because <laughs> yeah, they haven't had a good memory in a long time or they haven't fed off of good aligned brains in a while. Nice. So, yeah. Um, Can Senna pet it? <laughs> you wanna pet it? Yeah! Okay, so you walk up to one and it's really happy right now and it knows you're a good creature, so it allows it, even though it feels really weird. So. <laughs> you feel yeah. really weird. <laughs> Indeed, it does feel really weird and your positive thoughts right now about how cute it is and all of that, it's feeding off of that too. So it's also bouncing around up and down. <laughs> and now that you're closer to it, you actually hear how it's being floating right now. It kind of sounds like pockets of air are jutting out from somewhere. That's probably why it's called a flump. <laughs> this is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> That's why I, I needed this encounter to happen. I was looking forward to it. Um, and then Cephalos, actually, to Dante right now, is saying, hmm, This gives me an idea, actually. Let's have it. Remember, I told you that we want. I wanted the mind flayers to change. Yes, that our grand design was flawed. And you think it's possible for them to change now? Certainly, we have done many things to change other creatures, as you saw a while ago. I do not think I mentioned this. But that thing that was an eyeball with many other eyes that did not start off that way. It was changed through a dark ritual to become what it was, which was a psychic hub and a messenger for the elder brain and the colony. I'm thinking these creatures if I can make mind flayers be able to sustain themselves like how these things do, perhaps, perhaps we will no longer need to eat brains. Ooh. How do you propose we do this? I do not know yet. However, I believe it will require a ritual of sorts, just like how we have altered other creatures in the past. 
That is for another time. For now, let us deal with the threat that we have in front of us. Agreed. Alright. Here we go. So, that was just a bit of like character development for everyone, I think. <laughs> yeah. For Dante, maybe not so much. Mm. Wait, Dante, do you want it to feed off of you, or you, like, you just like don't want that? No, uh, it's a few, few things. He doesn't like it when people like go into his mind, and also he doesn't he doesn't think he has any like thing to offer <laughs> to them that's like happy. Oh. Dante is just like oh. just full of trauma, you know. <laughs> Oh, that's true. It might turn it blue. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's they're all uh, they're all a very vibrant and soft pink right now. So like, yeah, I think if they feed off of you, they'll turn blue. Yeah. Especially considering the year before. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understandable. <laughs> Understandable. They'll become blue just like the picture, you know. It's like a picture of what they could look like if they siphoned negative or like sad thoughts. Okay, okay. Alright, alright. So you walk past by them, trying not to let them register your presence. Um, by the way, like, um, Cephalos says you can communicate with them, but then um, it only understands under common. Mm. Uh, yeah. In fact, the only person who can talk to it actually is Cephalosk, which is not an ideal situation. It's probably yeah. gonna turn red again. So yeah, he says, never mind, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Alright, so yeah, I'll go ahead. Aw, Sita like, Sita like very sadly says bye to it. She's gonna <laughs> miss it a lot. <laughs> yeah, and like, all of them, there's quite, quite a few, there's... Oh, there's a lot? Least... Yeah, there's a lot. There's like 10 of them, and they all kind of like, with all of their tentacles, wave goodbye at all of you. Aww. We wave goodbye as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they kind of like just float in their own direction. They're floating towards where you all came from now. Because they're thinking, what if there's more? <laughs> Oh, dude, you look for a vibrant prank. Oh, that's so that's so cute. Yeah, they look like that right now. They're very much happy. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. Your first encounter with a flump. <laughs> with flumps, rather. Yeah. I, I, I tell everyone, like, this goes to show no matter what pla where place you go, there's always, like, inherently good creatures running around Indeed. Mm -hmm. and also inherently assholy creatures as you like the drow <laughs> that's yeah. also true <laughs> alright okay so you're heading now towards the elder brains um where do you think it is and um let's see I think y'all want to sneak here at this point no so go ahead and roll a Stealth check. This should be a lot easier now that you don't have the really noisy person. Do I have time to like grant the guys um guidance before they stealth? Sure. Problem. Okay. I cast guidance on Hmm. Oh, this is concentration. I can't like give it away for free. <laughs> okay. I'll cast guidance on uh, I'll cast guidance on Cephalos just to make sure. Oh, okay. Not yeah, sure. Do that. Cephalos is not very stealthy after all, so that's a good idea. All right, so everyone roll a stealth check for me so that you'll remain unseen. Nice. Okay. He gets a plus four to this, or a D four rather. Oh no. Oh, I did not roll really well though. That is 12 total. What's everyone else's rolls? Oh, I forgot. I was. No, I rolled a 10. 
I rolled a 10. Okay. I rolled 16, and so did Dante. Both of you are at 16. Oh, man. Oh, oh no, that won't do it. I mean, y'all are traversing right now through a really complicated place. Like, uh, um, Cephalos tells you that this compound is going to be kind of networked together. Um, there's yeah. a lot of turns here and there in the area. Let's see if okay. I can find it. So I'm going to be using this map. There. Like, I'm not updating the Albert map, I'm looking at a book map right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's a guard room. So there's a guard room, and that's the first place that you go to. Uh, unfortunately, you don't, like, you don't roll good enough stealth, so one Mind Flayer in that guard room does notice you all. Oh shit. Yeah. And, um, hmm. How do we do this? Let's roll initiative. And let's see if you can kill this guy in one round before he, you know, is like able to do anything. But, Found the alarm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even though they're a hive mind, it still has to communicate that it saw something. So, <laughs> we still have a chance. Um. Oh, that's not 19. Great. I rolled 19. Okay, you got 19. You got 11. Uh, what's everyone else's initiative? Eight. Um, 12. Oh, Stephalos got 3. Okay, so only, <laughs> only Dante and Rico have a shot at destroying this Mind Flayer before it can do anything. So, what are your actions? This is all theater of the mind right now, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give you perspective, you're both six... All of you are like 60-ish feet away from this creature right now. It has registered your presence, but luckily for you, it's the only one there. Mm. So what do you do? And you're like all bunched up in a hallway right now because it's not a very wide hallway, so you are bunched up if it decides to mind blast you. Shit, okay. Hmm. <laughs> it's my turn, right? Yeah, it's your turn. You got the highest, I think. 19. Yeah, okay. Uh, as I... As I cast, um... Well, I'll tell Dante, like, let's just rail on this guy with all our attacks, and then I... Don't make I will... too much noise. Yeah. I will use a bonus action to cast Hex. Okay. And then... Oh shit, I can't do this yet. Okay. Uh, and then I'll use my main action to cast Eldritch Blasts on this guy. Okay, let's see if he can defeat it immediately. Alright, roll your attacks. Yeah. It's AC is 15, just like before. Oh, I'll use 3d20 and then I'll add plus 9 to my attacks. Let's see. Okay. So 9, so 8 plus 9 is 17, that will hit. 4 plus 9 4 plus is 9, 13. 13, that won't hit. That won't hit, yeah. So but the other, hit. two attacks hit, okay. Yeah. This will be... Uh... 2d10 and also 2d6 from the hex. Yeah. Hmm. It's not bad at all, dude. Yeah. That's two glaive attacks and one great sword attack. So that's 13 force damage and then from necrotic, that's four. So 17 points total. Okay, 17 points. Okay, we're keeping track of that. And uh, uh how, 17 damage. How high is the ceiling? Because I want to fly up to the ceiling. The ceiling is 15. Yeah, 15 feet high. Okay, it's. I'll I'll go up so that um the other party members can pass through. Yeah. Okay. They could pass through even if you were in the same spot. But yes, they won't have to like go through your space essentially. Okay. okay. Cool. Alright, 
and then Dante, it's your turn now. 17 I damage think. so far. Yeah. yeah. 17 damage so he far. He does not look injured at all, no. No. He looks um, barely injured. Dante is going to move his full movement 30 feet, so he's 30 feet away from the Mind Flayer, right? Yeah. He's going to cast uh, Autolux Resilient Sphere. Ooh, I gotta read that spell real quick because this might affect what will happen later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering if he can do telepathy through it. It says nothing. Nothing, not physical objects, energy, or other spell effects can pass through the barrier. Yeah, nothing can pass through, no. I guess even though it enumerated some, I think the nothing part blankets it, no? Mm. Oh, <laughs> you isolated the dude. Uh, but they dude. still have to make a dexterity saving throw, man. Yeah, okay. So Energy. just don't roll 17 or higher. He probably won't. They're not that dexterous, man. Mm, yeah, so they don't have any bonuses to save. That's just four. Great. But Dante just rushes just forward. Fear. Dante rushes forward and then raises his hand up while muttering a very, like, quiet incantation. And then shadows from beneath the Mind Flayer will engulf him. And then he's engulfed in, like, a like a bubble. Uh, with, that, with, like, shadowy uh, translucence. Yeah. The worst part is that it doesn't understand how magic works, so it's just in a bubble right now. Okay. That's in the bubble right now, and he's like looking around. Mm. And Dante okay. just whispers back to his party, "Hurry, I can't hold it for for long." Okay. Okay. All right. So that is the end of your turn, I think, Dante. Yeah. Uh. So how this works is nothing goes goes through it, even like from outside. So, like. Combat, like outside of the game, we'd have to like ready actions, and then when I drop it, you guys attack. Ah, good idea. Okay. So it's now its turn. Uh, Dante, you're 30 feet away from it. Yep. Let's keep track of that. Okay. And then it doesn't know how this works, so it tries. To communicate with the rest of the hive mind that you know i mean you can't see that it's trying to do that but then that's what it tries to do and uh yeah he's feeling really weird right now because it feels like his tie to the mind to the elder brain is up there right now mm. so it's a bad feeling for for mind flares that want to be connected to the elder brain and then with that, it desperately tries to mind blast all of you because it can see through the sphere, I think. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So it tries to mind blast all of you and you're all kind of like bracing for impact, but nothing happens. You hear the mind blast, but then it cannot pass through the Otilux resilient sphere. <laughs> then it's just wondering what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it is not this Mind Flayer's day-to-day, -day, boys and girls. Right. <laughs> All right, after that, it just ends its turn. It can't move. Uh, it, can't can, move right? it can move if it wants, but at half half its movement, uh, it, it rolls the sphere. It rolls the bubble. It's like a hamster ball. Okay, so it <laughs> rolls the, fee the ball 15 feet towards like a hallway that's to its left okay but that's about it like he can't get to the hallway <laughs> all right that's the end of its turn that's such a sad turn for it man <laughs> okay despite how intelligent it is it's unfortunately ignorant about magic all right so next up is um cephalos isn't it yeah okay is it? No, 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 next up is Cinnabar. You'll have to... I rolled an 8. Yeah, yeah you rolled an 8, but he rolled a 4. <laughs> okay. Um, Cinna is just going to uh, move past. I think that was the plan. And then she's going to ready her um, 
she's going to ready her hammer, uh, Earth Shaper, and she will throw it at him um, once the hamster ball drops. Mm. Okay. Mm. It was... Yeah, it, you would be... Your speed is 25, right? Now yes. you would be 35-ish feet away from it. We'll put it at 40, because it's a weird yeah. angle. All right. Nico, um, Mind Flayer at 11. And it's then a it, and then Safa at uh, 4. There you go. I put our initiative there now. Okay, Cephalosk. Um, he's pretty familiar with the spell. He wants to learn this someday as well. And then he just like goes 30 feet towards his brother. His, uh, his kin. And then... Hmm, what spells can he use that are not loud? Because he did lightning before. And that's not... That's not quiet at all. I was gonna use Till the Dead, and then I was like, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no wait, that's that's not a good idea. Uh okay, what he'll do is he'll go close and then he will prepare a mind blast for his compa for his kin. Nice. He'll, he'll ready a mind blast. Okay. Uh Dante, it's your turn. No. Rico. My turn. Oh, sorry, Rico. Oh wait, I put the wrong name here. Rico and then Dante, right? Rico. I will also fly a bit closer. I'll say like 20 feet closer. Somewhere where I'm near Cephalosk and uh, Sina, basically. And uh, I can only ready main actions, right? No bonus actions. Ah, uh, you can't ready bonus actions, yo. Okay, it's cool. Um, let's they don't see. call it ready bonus action after all. That is true. Should be will... an option like that, though. Ready bonus action. <laughs> right. Uh, hmm. Let's see what else. What can I do to? Uh, hmm. I already casted the hex. Okay. I will just ready a spell. I will. Wait, huh? let me check something. Uh... Oh, okay. I will ready, um, I'll ready an action. And the minute that Dante releases the sphere, I will cast Scorching Ray at the third level, sending four beams at him. So, yeah. Okay. Scorching Ray is not too loud, I would say, yeah? It's not like it's firing a gun. In a way. Yeah. It's still a little bit loud, but don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. So you ready that gotcha. And hey, now it's your turn. Uh, before Rico ends his turn, I will drop concentration. Oh, okay. okay. So Okay, so you can take your reaction now, everybody. Now that yeah. the ball is down. For like one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so everybody so roll wrong, your first. stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> roll your stuff. Okay, Earth Shaper. That's a 30. Oh, well, yeah, of course that hits. Wow. Uh, 30 to hit. AC. And then 1d8 plus. Uh, so 13 damage, but I also get a plus uh, extra 1d8 because I threw it. Okay, understood. Uh, 18. 18. Okay, not bad. Plus its current 17. That's going to be... Let's see, 17 plus... 18, yeah? That'll bring it to 35. Mm. It, it looks badly I'll roll, injured now. <laughs> I'll roll mine now. So four beams. Uh, sorry, no, not badly injured, but injured. It looks injured. Okay. Um, okay. Um, seven, seven plus nine. That's going to be above fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So okay. So oh, this uh, Raph, is... why did you roll four d twenties? Because it's four beams of uh, scorching ray. Ah, right. I guess okay. to become the third level. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. 
Okay, so that's gonna be 6d6 fire damage. This is probably a dead. It's gonna be a come calamari soon, yo. With with this is added with hex as well, so this is uh, like that's gonna 90. be 9d6. Oh shit. Fried calamari with a tinge of darkness. <laughs> Charred. Charred. Charred calamari. Charred calamari. Oh, shit. That's 29? Okay. So, 29 Oof. plus 35. That'll bring it to 64. Oh, my. It looks badly injured now. Cephalos. Cephalos will me. also release his mind blast, so that's gonna be... I'll, I'll roll the resistance first for the Mind Flayer, Kin, Intelligence is plus 15. 15 is probably the DC. Yeah, that's a DC. So it'll take half of this. 48 plus 4. Yeah, yeah get to use the purple dice. Click, clack, click, clack. Oh, that's not a great roll though. That is 4 plus 4 plus 4. 12, half, 6, 70. Oh my goodness, that almost did it. Dante, okay. it's your turn. You're the finisher. Uh, Dante will bonus action blade song, but there's no music that comes on. It, his cane just vibrates. And then. Uh, that gives him 40 feet of movement. Can he reach the mind oh, flare? Yeah, so, <laughs> all the way up there. And then whack him with a cane. Uh, the cane gets coated in like a blue, uh, no, in a yellow fire as he casts green flame blade. Ooh. Yeah, because you don't want to make it thunder right Yeah, now. I don't want the booming blade. So, smart, I'm going to do smart, that. Smart. Attack cane. Oops, Kane for 21 to hit 9 damage plus uh, flame plus 8. So 9 plus 8 is what, 17. Yeah, 17 damage. That'll do it, man. There. <laughs> so uh, non lethally. Oh, okay. So you non lethally take it down. So immediately after you lose concentration on your. A sphere. It's a blast of all sorts of things. Yeah. Gets hit by the hammer first, and then by Rico's fire blasts, and then by a mind blast, and then a finisher with Dante closing the gap and hitting him with the baton and fire. Mm -mm. Hells yeah. Oh, such an execution move. Can I? You all get inspiration for yeah, that? Yeah, boy. Christ. What the fuck was that? <laughs> we're gonna need it. Yeah, this gonna need is it. coordination. Coordination. So I think all of you have two inspiration now. It doesn't yeah. go beyond two, by the way. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, nice. man. That was so crazy. Good job, everybody. A big clap. Alright, yeah. so it's unconscious right now, and you don't know how long it will take before it becomes conscious, unless you want to do something about that. Uh, you done. know, I kind of imagine us taking pains at being as stealthy and as quiet as possible, and the Battle Brothers are probably like super sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, prob that's probably why security is so thin right now, you know? That's like, true. They're making lots of, <laughs> they're making lots of noise. <laughs> We just yeah. hear like thunder and we're like, oh my god, it's them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you literally feel the ground shake every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dante just rises after hitting him and then he says, um, What do we do with him? I did not kill him. Uh, Lask says, oh. Perhaps I could eat its brain again. But uh, uh, yeah. I... Okay. Dante Dante looks at Cephalos. Um, you said that you wanted the mind flayers to change. If we just kill everyone, who will who will be left to change after this? 
Do not worry about that. Uh, did you ever give him your name? Because he would, he would at this point start no, calling people by their names. Dante never gave him his name, but you know, Rico and Sina has been calling him Dante. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's true. So he says, uh, You do not have to worry about that, Dante. I know that my kind are being hunted right now, but they are persistent and are pesty, just like that drow woman said. There will be those who are not, do not want to continue our path. However, we are few and far in between. Mm. Well, and right now we need to know where the elder brain is, so that once we eliminate it, then the rest of the f mind flares can have their chance. Indeed, once the elder brain is taken out of the equation, then they are forced to make their own decisions. They will no longer be part of a hive mind. Well then. Have your fill. And he points to the mind player with his cane. Uh, Alright. Okay, and then since it's incapacitated, yeah, he's got no trance. His brain is going to be eaten as well. And uh, yeah, it looks disgusting. Like, this could be you yeah, guys if you're not, not careful. Uh, this could be you all if you're not careful. So, the brain yeah. gets extracted, yeah. And then, Dante doesn't flinch. Uh, yeah. Neither, me neither. He's been with devils. He's, he's, seen, them, devil. he's seen them do... He's seen things. Yeah. He's seen things. And then Cephalos says... Uh, uh, he's just going to like um, chuckle a bit and looks at both you, Rico, and actually Senna as well. You know, it's been a while since I've had a good aligned creature's brain. If ever you are about to expire, please think of me. I would <laughs> like to have your positive thoughts and memories to carry along. That's that's nice, but I feel like Respectfully? you'll just taste my no. <laughs> you'll just you'll just be tasting my irritation for dying like the third time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be mildly annoyed for dying the third time, but you know, like, have it your way. Corpses can't disagree. <laughs> I sense. appreciate asking permission, but respectfully, no. <laughs> then he says, oh, that is unfortunate. I like how he's very polite, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's a bit we, we... like, he was a bit excited for y'all to agree, but then he's like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I clarified the cephalos, like, I didn't say no, I just warned you that you'll just be tasting, like, mild irritation. <laughs> Very well, then. I look forward to one day having the mind of a god. As they right. Say. All right, um... then. Yeah, it also kind of makes you realize he's like, what kind of pains has this dude been eating? Most of them yeah. have been deranged, probably. <laughs> um, On the other hand, he's been able to maintain his level of composure and being kind. So I was like, maybe he's had a few good brains here and there, maybe. Yeah. All right. So that is the end of that, and then uh, it's 11.40, time check. Do y'all have food ready? Um, I'll have to go and grab some. Yeah, you said. Graf? I I'm good, I'll eat as well and take a shower, so yeah. Okay, uh, in that case, let's meet back at 12.40 then. Already. Okay. After this, it might be the elder brain fight or some other thing that Woo happens. Yeah. All right. Nice. Alrighty. Okay. We'll reconvene at 12:40. I'll see y'all later. See ya. Bye. See ya then. Bye. I mean, you can discuss your battle plan some more if you want to. Okay. Yeah.
Um, Cephalos, I mean, I wasn't around when you were talking about this, so... Yeah. Your, your um, main idea is to summon the planetar to deal with everything else and then focus on the Elder Brain. Mm. Yeah, and, and then I'm thinking, since we have a planetar now, this changes things. Maybe I'll cast first my Greater Invisibility on both the planetar and Cephalosk so that they can deal with the small fry and then yeah we i don't think we want the planetar to be invisible so the mind flayers can target it to draw their to draw uh their fire oh you're right you're right you're yeah. right okay so it'll still be you dante and cephalos will be invisible mm, okay Okay, and then, and then uh, yeah, that's we, really, and then, yeah, yeah, that will be it. And then we try to not huddle in one corner so that they don't mind blast us, as we have learned. Mm -hmm. Cool, spread out. Yeah. I might, I might use my ever smoking bottle, but I will try to make sure it doesn't obscure your own vision, so... Yeah, mm. just the heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming you're discussing this as you're getting deeper into the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, alrighty. So let me check my map. On the map. Okay, heading the map. in there. I'm the map. I'm the map. All right, let's uh, go. Map so time. you're at the well, okay, you go towards a tunnel, and through that tunnel on the other side, you kind of see that there are like some doors to other rooms, although the room itself is empty, it seems. It looks like there isn't anything around. And let's see, how many doors do you see? One, two, three, four. Five, six. You see, like six doors. There are about to your right, and then one straight ahead of you, and another one that is to your left. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, while we see these doors, I will drink my potion of psychic resistance just to be ready, and then. Oh, I will definitely drink my potion of psychic resistance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good idea there, good yeah. idea. So we all do. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Cephalosk. Did you get one for him, by the way? I don't know if you did. Mm. I had an extra one as well. Uh, I can give him one. He can have one of mine. Okay, I have so an extra one cool. also, so we can... We, we have one more extra. Okay, good. There you go. Okay, so Cephalosk will gladly chug that down. He thanks whoever gave it to him. I'm not sure which one. I'll, I'll do it. I'll give mine. Okay, so he thanks Rico for letting you, for letting him drink that. Yeah. He chugs it down. So everybody has resistance to psychic damage, which you will need. Cephalosk. Uh... Oh, uh, Link, quick, uh, quick heads up. I will have to leave by 2 because we have to go somewhere by 2.30. <laughs> Mm. Sure. Okay, no problem. We're planning to end by two months, so yeah, it's all yeah. good. We have Cephalos lead the way. Which door to go? Yeah, okay. So you guys go towards... Well, he still has to roll for this, because he's still digesting the brain. No, just Can I give him guidance? Yeah, you can give him guidance, and he has advantage since he ate the brain. Ooh, that's not bad. Plus four. Okay, 19. That'll do it. So nice. he leads you to... There are four doors on the right. You go to the farthest end of the door, because it's like a hallway of doors in a way. So the farthest end to the right, that's where you go. And then... Shit, that'll lead you right to the place. Okay, here we go. Let's go! So, everybody, I'm sending a new map link. Here we okay. go. Okay. New map link. Here we go. You managed to evade going through the entire dungeon, essentially. 
the yeah. dungeon. It's a new map link because you were preparing this while we were in the other link. Indeed. Ooh. Am I still the thing? Oh dear. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god, why are we scared? What is it? I haven't seen it yet. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh gross. <laughs> yeah. I'll describe the scene real soon, but it is as you see. Are so... you pretty far away from us? Uh, it starts oh, pretty far away. So you're all there at the bottom. Thank you. Um, Cephalos also here. Um, you did all say not to bunch up, so Cephalos goes here a bit. Uh, oh, yeah. You can also position yourselves within this square. Hold on, let me create a shape for you all. No, I, I tell them first to be near me so I can cast greater invisibility, and then we like spread out. Mm. That's uh, okay. But within those squares, that's where you can start. Okay. Mm. So who are the invisible ones, so that I can mark it down? Uh, Cephalosk and Dante. Okay. In this, and Dante also in this. Yeah. There we go. I'm gonna be and here, I... so that he's forced to, forced to like, do that direction. Are those? What is that, a fire giant or an orc? An oh, orc? Orc. Orc. They're one of those thick boys that you oh, saw the... before. No. Thick boys. It's a portable spell. I know you uh, lose four sorcery points. So that's... Yeah, you do have to use four sorcery points. Expensive, man. Yeah. And then it lasts one minute, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. No point. Building stealth. They're not surprised to see. <laughs> so. All right, everybody. I think. Okay. Hold on. Let me describe everything first. So. What you are seeing is. It's like a pool of brine. This is the elder brain resting pool area. Oh. Yeah. And then. In the middle, you see. Brian pool looks like the purpley, disgusting looking fluid that you see over there. There's a faint um, purple or pink glow that's emanating from the fluids. Then let's see. Mm, where does it say here? Okay, the Brian pool seems to be protected by some kind of layer of a glass-like substance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it look uh, fake, the glass? You can't tell from this distance, but you do see that there's some kind of thing protecting the, th protecting the elder brain at the moment. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> and then at the the far side you see what looks like a large mind flayer it looks way larger than the ones that you've seen so far Ew. yeah it also looks like you you've noticed that most mind flayers that you've interacted with including cephalos cast four tentacles this one on the other hand boasts a total of i think it was eight or six tentacles mm. oh. yeah it's got a lot more of that stuff. Then uh, you also see those two fiendish looking orcs on the side there, ready to defend this elder brain. Wow. And then, well, I mean, they can't telepathically communicate with you unless you allow them to. So they're just like looking at you and they're yeah, trying I mean, to communicate. But it's like it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, touching the thoughts. Mm -hmm. 
it and like that's really all you can register at the moment there seems to be that one big brine pool and then there are some brine pools on the side there those aren't elder brains although it's uh, it shows like a picture of an elder brain oh. then those are just other brine pools mm. oh, it has like extra swimming pools when it gets more. <laughs> yeah sort of <laughs> then, yeah, that is it. In the middle, though, you can see the elder brain underneath the glass thingy. Oh. So, everybody, I think you all are not going to wait around here, so roll initiative. Yeah. Ooh. It's time huh? to um, slay some slavers. Slay some slavers? Yeah. Hey. One. Oh god, that was terrible. Uh, 17. Okay. Wait, I only have, because I'm wearing um, heavy armor, I only get the disadvantage on stealth, right? Uh, just on stealth, not on okay. all decks checks. Alright, then just my, yay, my initiative check was 19. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Cephalosk's initiative is 18. Somebody please write that down. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah. Are those stairs, by the way? Is that like a second floor we're seeing with these stairs? Those are staircases. Mm. They lead... I think they lead upwards. I'll say they lead upwards, even if it looks like it might lead downwards. Okay. Um, How high is the second floor like? Second floor is 15 feet high. Mm. Okay. The glass wall that's enclosed, is it enclosed like at the top or? Uh, yeah, it is enclosed at the top and it's protecting what's beneath it, if that's what you're asking. Mm. And inside it is liquid, so it's like, a, it's like an aquarium, a cylindrical aquarium. It's it's like that in a way though the aquarium has like the top of the glass there in a sense got it what was cephalosk's um role 18. again 18. and then i have to roll for my monsters now so first the elder brain is obviously not very dexterous it's just a floating brain okay that is a 12 for the elder brain Wow. Next up is the big method. Oh, he's also not very dexterous. That's two. Oh, dude. Just the two. And then finally, the orky boys, the lethic orcs. I mean, uh, let's just call them what they're actually called. They're called Tanarox. Here we go. Tana rocks. Uh, and the Tana rocks, they got 14. Okay. Terrible. I don't know who goes first, like Dante or Rico, because they. Um... Dante or Rico. I go. They um, got 12. My roll was uh, 17. Oh, um, my roll was 17. Okay. Yeah. okay I mean... Let's change that. Let me Rico double. At 17. Yeah. Tay versus the elder brain who goes first. Um, Dante. Shall we roll off? Uh, let's roll off Dante. Okay. Rico, you probably have the advantage here because it has no dexterity. That's a one. Have wow. Beat one, my dude. In it? That's a In nine. Initiative? <laughs> no, no, not, not you, Rico, Dante. Ah, okay, okay, sorry. Initiative uh, or dex? Init okay. A dex. We're going to contest dex. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I rolled a four. You still beat it anyway. Yeah, yeah you still beat it anyway. <laughs> you rolled a natural one, but your bonuses help. So you go ahead. Okay, and no. then we have initiative 20, because these are lair actions. Oh. T. Oh, so the lair actions go first, actually. Okay. Good, that's good. Okay, so, lair actions first, then, in this combat. Oh. So, 
Whoever wants to play boss battle music, now's the time, because this is a- I've been trying to play, but for some reason, Fredboat doesn't like me, so uh, feel free to uh, <laughs> try someone uh, else. Fredboat, oh my god. Fredboat oh Fred is being emotional. If anyone, I'm gonna go for it, I would like to try. Go you can for try it, it. yeah. Oh. I, never, uh, I never touch music. How do you actually um, play this one? Is, ah, okay, um, I see that. Yeah. Here. Let's see. Hmm, okay, so within 120 feet of it. Let's see. Can't really see. Oh, no, wait, that's blind sight. That's right. Hold on. Five. No, I should use the measuring tool. I'm just imagining the Wii music. Let's see. I mean, it doesn't really know who's the bigger threat, so it's going to be targeting Cephalosk because it at least knows the Mind Flayer is a threat. So it's going to be targeting Cephalosk, and Cephalosk has to oh, no. <laughs> keep that a... ring on him. C18 charisma save. Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. So, How charismatic yes. are elder brains? How charismatic? Yeah. Mm, pretty charismatic. Oh, they God. have high high personality. Then it's the mind flares that they have to worry about because your mind flare buddy is about to get charisma. Charisma is being attacked right now. Ah, uh, plus six. That's not terrible. He just has to roll a twelve. Mm -hmm. Good, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, he rolled a thirteen, so okay, what happens when he passes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, mm -hmm. happens when it passes. So the Elder Brain, you can feel like a pressure going towards all of you, but it's more focused on Cephalos. But the pressure he maintains his mind. His mind will not falter. Nice. He is still able to move this turn. All right. That's the lair action. Next up is... We have Sina. Wow. Surprisingly, Sina is first? How did this happen? I know, right? The one with the stubby legs works. Um... You should. I think you should summon the thingy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, Sina, as an action, she will uh, pull out a bead from her choker necklace and um, she will summon um, her planetar, well, her planar ally. Okay, it's a bonus action to use the bead, by the way. Oh, it's so a bonus not... action. Okay, awesome. So that is my bonus action. And then for my action, um, God, everything is so far away. So, so, so far away. The... <laughs> I don't oh. have a planetar, so I'm just going to put a big ass thing. Everything oh, is use, so far no, away. No, use, use Edmund there. <laughs> use Edmund. <laughs> ah, or, or this one. Oh yeah, you have... There you go, that's the one. Yeah. Nice. Uh, where do you want to summon it, by the way? It can be up to a certain amount of feet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, j just by me. Um, so my movement will be, I will take a uh, cover behind this. I'm assuming it's a pillar. <laughs> uh, no, um, it's more like a pedestal. Oh, damn it. Okay. Um, I'll just be there. Um, and then I'll do that. And then as an action, because there's really nothing I can do from this uh, <laughs> thing. Um, I, on a fourth level... Um, uh, she kind of like uh, holds her hands on Earth Shaper, and she will uh, cast Wall of Fire. Wall oh, wow. of Fire? That's so badass. Where do you cast oh. the Wall of Fire? Um, I want to. I want to hit. Uh, oops, no, not that. Uh, I want to hit the uh, thick boys. All right, the thick boys. Okay, yeah. let's draw that out then. So oh. the Wall of Fire. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
Let's see. How far can it go? Like here? It says 60 feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Go up until that far, the red line. Yeah. That'd be really hard to hit both of them. It's oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I think we can adjust it a bit, you know? Let me see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45, 50, 55, 60. Oh, yeah, you're gonna only end up hitting one of them. I, if it's only one, then wag na lang, kasi I'm just gonna, it's gonna be, uh. Yeah. It's, it's gonna, it's not a good thing. Can you try just... holding your action and see if they come closer? I don't know. Yeah, um, I will hold my action and I will cast, um, uh, are they? What are they? Are they armored from where I can see? Oh, they're not armored. They look exactly they... like what you were fighting a while back. Okay. Armored brutes. All right, then if that's the case, I will cast hold person on one of them. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. They are. Wait, what are they considered? Let me check real quick. Status Hopefully, they're not wise. Distinction. Are considered. I mean, I think you would know this. They are considered demons or fiends, so you know that person won't work on them. Oh poop! Yeah. Uh, oh fuck it! I I don't know. I'll. There's not much I can do because they're kind of far away. Um. Hmm. hmm. You can try going upstairs and like from there maybe you can get I don't know, cover some distance to reach them, maybe. Yeah. I think. And eleven. Yeah, I'll just go up here. And okay. then my planar ally will be here. And then for my action, uh I will that's it, I think. I can't really do anything. Alrighty. Is your movement speed 30, by the way, or is it oh, 25? 25 here. Okay. Go. Oh, wait. No, I do know what I want to do, but okay. um, tell me if, if uh, I can do this. Okay. I want to cast, cast Blade Barrier. Okay. Um, so I can make a straight wall up to 100 feet long, 20 feet high. Okay. Oh. Um, and I want to hit both of them. Ah, uh, so it would look like 100 feet, you said. Mm -hmm. 100 feet long. That can do it, yeah. Awesome. It can, can be like these people over here, right? Or what does 60 feet in diameter look if it's a ring? Hmm, it's 60 feet in diameter, it would be... Hold on. Let me look. It's the wrong shape. 60 feet, yeah. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. That's like that big. That's huge, yo. <laughs> awesome. I would like to move that circle so that I it can hit... um. Everyone. Uh, elicit in the back and the um thing, the two. Basically, they're going to be on the fringes because it says, I create a vertical wall of whirling razor-sharp blades made of magical energy. Whoa. Anyone who enters the wall's area for the first time on a turn must make a dexterity saving throw. Mm, okay. So you're basically going to hit everyone. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty, so 60 foot radius, that'll hit everyone. What save mm -hmm. am I making? Uh, dexterity, uh, but it will be on, on the first time of a turn or starts its turn there. When a creature uh, ends, enters it for the first time or starts its turn. Okay. Wait, Sean, right. did you say 60 foot radius or 60 foot diameter? 60 feet in diameter? So it's smaller than... Oh, diameter. Yeah. Then it's smaller than that, yeah. Ma, it's, it's a diameter, but 
Yeah, 60 feet in diameter. So it's uh, okay, 30 foot so radius. That's 30 foot radius. 5, yeah. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, no, it's a lot smaller. That's okay. Then I'll just do the line and I'll hit the two orkies in the front. Okay, understood. So, okay. We will make saves then. The DC. Oh, no. That's at the start of their turn. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And this is concentration, is it? This is concentration. Okay, there you go. Con, con, hey, con. good turn. Good turn. Okay, so they have to do saves later. Remember that. Cephalos Nesks, I think. Yep, it's him. Alright, so he is not affected by that thing that the Elder Brain did with its lair action, so... Uh, invisible, but still visible to the Elder Brain in a, way, a weird way. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30... Can it reach this Tanarok with its Mind Blast? Oh, that'll do. Okay, so it's going to Mind Blast the one on the right. Alright, and he has to make a int save, which he is not good at. Okay. He rolled really fucking good. That's a 16. <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes I roll good in the strangest of times. So he'll still take half of 44, 48 plus 4. Oh, I rolled many ones this time though. Okay, that's 2 plus 3, 5, 6, 11, 15 halved, so it takes 7 damage. Okay. By the way, when is the planetary turn, uh, Sina? That's a good uh, question. When that is a good question. It? When is its turn? <laughs> Mm. I think it acts on its own, no? I think it has its own initiative, yeah. I think That's you have to... It tells me it has its own initiative. Can you roll its initiative? Yeah, I mean, sure. I... I'll just pull up its Sana. Okay. It's plus five. Oh, yeah. D20 How do you plus know, five. dude? You check the... You check the stats? Mm, Planetar is right? Yeah. Uh, Eleven? 11, okay. That is not so bad. 11. I'll put it just after the Elder Brain. Okay, now that's pretty bad. Anatar. Wait, hold on. Isn't Planar Ally also concentration? Let's check. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's, it's not. not. It's instant no. ideas. Okay. That makes it even crazier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go planetar eleven. Yeah. Then that is the end of your turn. And then Ephelosk, he did mind blast, and I think that's it. That's all he can do. Next up is Rico. Okay, I'm gonna move thirty feet. Let's see, let me see how far I can go. Okay. I am right here, so as far as I go, I'm flying up there, and then, oh, I'm still... How high up are you, by the way? Uh, I'll be, I'll be like on the stairs, I'm not flying, okay. yeah. And then from there, I'm going to, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go for the Elder Brain. I'm gonna start uh, casting Eldritch Blast on it. Okay. Um, still the glass-like thing there, though. But yeah, you could do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if the the glass is how fragile it is. So. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Let's let's discover together. Okay. Let's discover um, together. Ooh, um, I think I rolled a natural one, but then it's a plus nine. Is this like a fluke or like what's going on, you know? It will always automatically miss if you roll one on attack rolls. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does 13 and 17 hit it? 
16 and 17 would hit it, but then like the glass is what you hit instead. General damage I... for the glass though. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Now I see. Now I see what's going on here. Okay, well. 2d10. 13. 13 damage. This is force damage, yeah? Okay. So that is going to... It looks like it's affecting the glass-like substance, but it's still holding on. See, there's a little bit of a crack there. I see. Okay, okay, okay. See where this is going. Um, in that case, I will summon. No. Hmm. Should I do this now? Um. Uh, wait. Hold on. As a bonus action, I think I'll. Let me just double check something. Yeah. Uh, Oof. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. I'll be playing this song if I can find it because it feels appropriate right now. A draft. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I can't seem to hear Fred Boat. I think the music just stopped. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'll play that again, don't worry. Hold on. Uh... Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna use my bonus action to convert another first level spell slot into a sorcery point, and then that ends my turn. Alrighty. It's command for Fred both to play. Oh, okay, I see yep. it. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, that's the end of your turn. Got it. Next up, we have the thick orcs. Okay, so at the start of their turn, they have to make deck saves. <laughs> they have minus one to that. 14 minus one, that'll fail. Another 14 minus 1 will fail. So they take the full 44 damage. Go ahead and roll. The bar? Oh, sorry. Uh, what, were, what were you saying? 44 damage? Yeah, 44. For me? Uh, for, for the because of your for the daggers. Oh, your got it. Daggers. Sorry. Yeah. One second. My blade barrier is 6d10. Oh my god, 6d10. That's crazy, yo. Uh, 20 <laughs> damage. 20 damage. <laughs> All right. Nice. They both take 20. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, full full damage. Yeah, that's it. There's no there's no special whatevers. Okay. So now special. It's just a meat grinder. <laughs> yeah, it's just a meat grinder. It also obscures vision, if I'm not mistaken. But there's that. Okay. It provides three quarters cover to creatures behind it, and its space is difficult to rain. Mm, let's see. So it's not fully covered. Yeah, Rika would still have been able to hit the glass. Okay, just making sure. Okay, so with that in mind, it is their turn. They're going to be heading towards... Ah! The thick orcs are gonna attack. At least they're gonna try to attack. They are... they have aggressive still. Okay. So this one, it like ignores that. And then go straight for... I think it will go straight for Rico first. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. The, the blade barrier is difficult terrain though, so I think it might have to eat a bit of movement. Yeah, uh, okay. So, 35 now. Then... Oh. I mean, they're gonna dash with a bonus action to close the distance. 
40, 45, 50, 55. Okay, that's about enough. Gonna Crap. hit you with three attacks, my dude. And I will kill that. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Um, um, okay, red is the bite attack. Here we go. Okay, I think that one will hit. That's 17 plus 7 for the bite. It's 23. Uh, yeah, that one will hit. Okay. Um, 20 doesn't hit though, I think. No? Uh, hold on, let me check. Give me a moment. That one will hit. Oh, 20 and this one will hit. Okay. The end of the bite, so you will take this much plus eight. There we go. And fifteen plus eight, you take twenty-three damage in total. Okay. There you go. That's I'll the do concentration of... for this. Okay. Greater in this. That's right. Uh. Let's see, how much do I need to pass? You need to pass a 10 only. Okay. Yeah, and you have to do this twice, because you, you got hit by two attacks. Oh, wow. shit. I'll, uh, I'll use inspiration for this one. You have to do that before the roll, dude. Oh. Yeah. You can still try Favored by the Gods, though, but that's a real no, chance. I used it yeah, up. Yeah, used it up. Okay. Well then, it did. You lost concentration. Fuck. Okay. Invisible. No longer in this. Righty. They are thick orcs. They are thick orcs indeed. And this one. It's intimidated by the planetar, but we'll go after it. For glory! There we go. For glory. It'll try, man. It'll try. <laughs> Why is it so much dice? That's not terrible. The lowest it got was 17. What's the planetar's AC? Does not hit. Alright, the highest it got is 22. That hits. Okay, so the bite attack connects. Plus four, that's ten damage to the planetar. Okay. Maybe it has resistance or something? It has resistance to radiant, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Okay, so it takes half of that, so it takes five only. Yay! Nice. All right. And that is the end of their turn. Next up we have Dante. Um, it looks like that. It looks like a, um, a, a dwarf angel. <laughs> a cherub with a beard. A cherub with a beard. Go. <laughs> that bonus action blade song. Okay. And then... Blade singing, one of your buffs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll do that blade song. And then, um, as his action, he's going to cast Blink. Uh, he whispers into his cane, and then shadows um, circle around him and engulf him, and uh, he blinks. All right, Let yeah. me review Blink again, huh? You have to roll for it as soon as this turn. Oh, and this is with a 5th level slot because I've run out of 3rd and 4th level slots now. Shit. Okay, that's yeah. an expensive blink. Yeah, I have one 5th level slot left and the rest are 2nd and 1st level slots na lang. Okay. Uh, roll d20. End of the turn. Uh, it's at the end of my turn. So I'll move first. Uh, I'll move... I have 40 feet of movement. Uh, these are platforms. When we go over them, are they difficult terrain? Or is it, are they easy enough to step on lang? 
is enough to stop on. There are some stair-like cases that you can see next to it. Okay. So let me do Hang on Blade Song and then Blinked. I will go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and stay there. And then I will roll my Blink. Uh, RD20. I just stay there. Okay, you just stay oh, there. Gosh. Yep. Alrighty. That okay, is... That's the end of your turn. The end of my turn, yes. Alright, the Elder Brain. Ooh, this guy. This thing. Oh, no. <laughs> right now, it's still on survival mode. So let's see what it ends up doing. There's quite a few options here. Okay, it will look at... It will look at Cephalosk with its blind sight. I don't know how you look at people with blind sight, but there you go. Then it's going to be casting Dominate Monster on it. Oh shit. Oh no! Yeah, this goes. Okay, Dominate Monster, DC 18. Oh my god. Better make it, my dude. Come on, Cephalosk. Nineteen plus six, that'll do it. Yeah. It's not dominated. Nice. Cephalosk is on point today, dude. Mm -hmm. Shit. I'm, okay. I'm so proud of our little octopusy friend. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. The Elder Brain's really pissed off. It's like, that normally works. <laughs> <laughs> He, he loves his independence so much. Loves his independence so much. I love it when the dice tell a story. Okay. I think that's the end of the Elder Brain's turn. That's his action. He can't oh, do anything oh, else. Good job, Cephalosk. Dang. Okay. And now that, it's, uh, now that it had a turn, its legendary actions come online now. I usually like to let legendary actions happen after their first turn. Mm. So then suddenly they have so many more actions if they're lost. Alright, so next up is the planetar. Go ahead and control the planetar. Um, did we kind of like decide how um, payment plan earning planetar? Mm. I haven't decided that yet. He just summoned it right in the heat of battle. He has no time to think. <laughs> like, well, shit. <laughs> I owe you a favor. <laughs> then he's like, very well. All Help right, battle, then. And I owe you a favor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then am I am I controlling am I controlling this guy? Or uh, you... you can tell it what to do, and then he'll do it to the best of his abilities, so that you don't have more to take care of, if you want. Alright. Uh, for now, I'll just say, um, can you... I'll ask... He will help me with this orc first, so he'll great, um, great sword uh, the orky boy. Alright. Orc shish kebab, right on. Right on, baby. Uh, so that's, that's 12 to hit, Jesus. Plus 12 to hit, yeah. Uh, how are you gonna miss this? Okay, he might actually. Third. No! So the nap B one. plus 12, that's going to be 15. Oh no, 15 will hit, actually. Nice. Oh. The arcs are very easy to hit. So both will hit then, okay. So that's 46 plus 5, the 8. I'll use rolls and rolls for this. Mm. 46 plus. Seven. Eight plus seven. That right? Plus seven. Yeah. yeah plus seven. Oof. <laughs> 58 just like that. 58. Boom. Ow. Okay, that was the first attack. The next attack is. The you same haven't thing. seen nothing yet? I haven't seen nothing yet! For um, yeah, let's go ahead and delete this guy because he's <laughs> dead. I did what she asked. What's next? <laughs> the then... big boy in the back. Oh, okay. So it is 120 flying speed, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, <laughs> 100, 100 wife, 110, 115, 120. It's almost there. <laughs> almost there. I'm gonna get ya! Awesome. I'm gonna get ya! Tentacle faced motherfucker. Alrighty, so that's the planetar. What an excellent turn. Nice. Does not have bonus actions. It does not have uh, bonus actions. That'll I do not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next up is Big Illithid. Big Illithid. Uh, Ooh. Big Illithid looks at the planetar. Don't you dare. It's coming right next to it, and it says, This will be interesting. It will try to dominate monster. It. <gasps> Don't you dare! The planetar has magical resistance, so it has yes, advantage. It does. it does indeed. So, hmm. wisdom plus 11. I mean, it'll try it, dude. It'll try it. Yeah. Oh, that is such a good thing it has advantage. So. 7 plus 11, that will bring it to 18. What is your DC save? 17. It is not oh. dominated. Yes! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been extremely hard if it That would have been <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> if you want to dominate me, you have to take me to dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> what a sassy planetar. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's now round two, lair actions. It cannot do the same lair action, so it's going to make a wall of force Fuck. instead. Like... Gonna try to close off somebody here, so it's 10 by 10. It's gonna close up Dante. One, okay. two, three, four. Then there'll be a fifth one on the top side, so that you're completely locked in. Oh, okay. wow. Uh, six, seven, eight. Oh, no, it doesn't want to do that. Eight, nine, ten. There you go. Right, um, Rico, you look like you're kind of like locked in right now with this Tanarok. Is the force separating me or oh okay, okay, it's cornering me, okay. Yeah, it's enclosing you in a way. And then Dante is kind of like locked in by a wall of force right now. Mm -hmm. Which okay. actually isn't such a big deal for him, but the mind the elder brain doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's that. And then that is the lair action. Okay. Next up is Sinna's round. Sina is going to uh, go here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, she's going to use her bonus action to summon her spiritual weapon. Um, okay. And then, just because I'm, I'm curious about how thick the glass is or what it's made of, she is going to... Uh, she's, it's going to whack. Okay, it's the, gonna um, the glass. The glass, yeah. Okay, uh, just so we're clear, you can make it apparate inside it also, if you Oh, I, it can? Awesome! Yeah, it it can. will. <laughs> it will. <laughs> Alright, um, so you apparate it right next to the Elder Brain, I guess. Yeah, it's like, hello. It will be right next to it. And it's just gonna smack the el Elder Brain. Alrighty. What's the range of spiritual weapon when it's cast? It's 60 feet? Oh, it is 60 feet. Okay, that's good. I'll reach it. But, yeah, that should reach it. Um, right. I can't move it right now, but it should reach it there. there go. And Next then to I'm going to cast it at a fourth level. Oh, shit. 2d8 force damage. Here we go. Yes. Ah, no. I'm just gonna hit it along manually. Okay. Good. Uh, twenty-one to hit. The one will hit. And. Uh, 
2d8 plus seven, 17 damage. Oh, wow. Okay, 17 damage so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hurt it a little bit. Your thing is operating in the brine pool. Really, it doesn't feel anything because it's spiritual, but you're pretty sure it would feel disgusted right now. So, it, but it takes the, like, it's not immune or something. Uh, it takes the full damage. All right, right. okay. Um, and then for my action, action, does 20 feet does not hit, does not hit. Um, then in that case, I will toll the dead, the, um, because that's the only thing that'll thing. Uh, 60 feet toll the dead for the elder brain. Okay. So it has to make a wisdom save. It has yes. advantage on that because it is also a magic resistant. Oh, boop. Um, 21. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that passes. Save. Yeah. And that is Sinna's turn. Alrighty, Sina with the <laughs> the apparition over there and then trying to bell it. It will not hold. Okay, here we go. Next up we have Cephalosk. Okay, so yeah. Cephalosk has been kind of an MVP of sorts lately. Um, after over recharging, he doesn't get his mind blast back. That's too bad. So he is going to 5, 10... 15, 20, 25, 30. I think he has line of sight of this orc. He does, okay. With an angle, he's going to be lightning bolting this orc without hitting you, Rico. So here we go. We'll cast it at... Hmm, I think he'll cast it at a higher level. He wants to destroy this orc quickly. Cast yes. it at 4th level, 96. Nice. Right, and then I have to roll a save for the Tanarok. It's minus 1 though. Oh wow, okay, the advantage helped. That'll half it, so it takes... 32 halved is 16. Okay. 16, that'll bring it to 33, and then 43, okay. Looks like an injured orky boy now. Nice. All right. I think that will be the end of Cephalosk's turn. Rico, your turn. Okay. Locked in melee with this Tanarok right now. That's true. Um, how long was the uh, how long was the how long was the fight we had with the Mind Flare? Was it like an hour ago, or was it a few minutes still? Uh, I can say it's like an hour ago at this point. Oh, it's an hour? Okay. Shit. Uh, I was hoping to transfer the hex from the Oh, sorry. Minute. You're talking about that one. No, it hasn't yeah. been an hour ago. It's just a few minutes ago. Okay. What I'll do now is I will... As a main action, I will cast Thunderstep. Ooh, and teleport nice. out of here. Okay, so where do you appear? my range for this is 90 feet so let me just get the ruler and see how far i can go um okay 90 feet if you that can go means... all the way inside the elder brains pool <laughs> i'm not doing that <laughs> i'll be would you say i would uh, make it here on the let me just uh you can measure it. You can make it anywhere there. Yeah, it's right here. Feet. Can I make it here? On this floor? This, that's exactly ninety feet. I'll do it. Okay, nice. And then uh oh and Orky Boy over here will get three D ten um thunder damage. He needs to do a con save. Okay, he'll get advantage on that one. I don't think he passes to that's a nine plus something. Let me just double check if it has a high con. But that's not good. Nice. That's not good at all. Um your DC is still fifteen, yeah? It's seventeen because I have the rod of the Pact Keeper. This is a this, this a, will 
give me plus two to my attack rolls and increase my save DC. This is for only warlock spells. Is this a warlock spell? Oh, okay. No, this is not a warlock spell. This is a sorcerer. So yeah, it's 15. Okay, so it is 15. And 9 plus 5, that still won't make it. It's just barely failing. Go ahead and roll 3d10. It takes the full damage. It's 15 thunder damage. Okay, 15. That'll bring it to... Alright, it's looking more like an injured or keep away. Nice. And uh, from there, I'll use my bonus action to transfer the hex that I casted on the Mind Slayer a few minutes ago onto the Elder Brain. Alrighty, so the Elder Brain is hexed. Yeah. I'll give him disadvantage on, I don't know, uh, intelligence checks, I guess. Okay, sure. Intelligence check have advantage disadvantages. Alrighty. So, is that the end of your turn? You can still move. Yeah, um... I'll move... Hold on, let me check uh, something. Oh. Yeah, I'll move right here. There. Where I can see everything, yeah. Okay, where you can see everything. Understood. Right. That is your turn, I think. And then yep. the Elder Brain is going to try to do one of its legendary actions now. Forgetting to do that. Every time I have legendary monsters, the one thing I forget to do is legendary actions. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Oh, even that's not gonna be great. I'll try. So it will target Cephalosk. And in Cephalosk space, enemies within 10 feet of that creature are going to be taking 3d6 psychic damage. So that's its one legendary action. Dante will take this only. It goes through the wall of force. It will go through the wall of force. Because it is psychic. Go. Well, that's not terrible. That's going to be 8 damage to you. Mm. One of its legendary actions. Right uh, I take half damage because of the psychic resistance. Indeed. So there you go. Four. Right. Now it's Dante's turn. Oh, no, no, no. Now it's the Thick Orc. The mm. Thick Orc cannot go to Dante at the moment. So it's going to go for Cephalosk instead. Shit. <laughs> Try man, it'll try. <laughs> That's not great. So that is nineteen, but Cephalosk will cast shield. So his AC is twenty now. Gets no damage. Ping ping ping. Cephalosk is really on point today, dang. Okay. That's the end of the thick orky boys. Next up we have I know before that going to be using Tanarok as his targeting point and we'll use the same thing to psychically blast you and Cephalosk. Wow. Okay, and Cephalosk. Okay, six damage, half to the both of you, so just three. Three damage. You take three damage as well. Mm -hmm. Then that is now the end of the Orky Boy's turns. Dante, your turn. DM, if I bonus action first and then ready in action, is that allowed or? That's allowed. Ah, okay. I will bonus Probably. action Shadow Blade. I just quickly say the incantation, Dulum uh, Kampilan, and then I cast this at second level because. I can't upcast it anymore. Well, I can, but I'm choosing not to use my fifth level spell slot. Alrighty. Uh, so now Dante has a Shadow Blade. And then... Uh, ready action. I would like... 
to just ready in action to attack the orc af the after I teleport beside him. So I end Not my blinking, right? yes, I end my turn, and hopefully I blink. Roll one d twenty. I we'll have to check Wall of Force real quick about the Ethereal plane, but continue. I do blink. It says Ethereal. It says Wall of Force blocks Ethereal travel, but uh, the 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 teleportation from Blink isn't like moving from one point to Ethereal plane to another. It's appearing from the Ethereal plane to the Material plane. So how do you want to uh, rule that? I'll be a teleport of some sort, which I'll allow. Okay, great. So, uh, that's my turn. I shadow, shadow bladed. I blinked, and then I'm readying an action to hit the orc. Okay. Uh, so then... let me get my thing there. Cool. You probably will blink this. Oh no! Wait, is that the blink roll, the seventeen? Yep. Ah, okay. Gotcha. All right. So that is the end of your turn. And um, its last legendary action, it's going to be using the Tanarok space again. And 3d6 damage to him. Okay, half of 6 again, so 3. Does go. that still damage me? Uh, you're in a different plane. You're okay. Alright. That's the end of Dante's turn. It's now the Elder Brain's turn, and it gains all its legendary actions back. Uh, it is clearly not in a favorable position right now. So, it's going to plane shift the fuck out of here. No! Um, fuck, so he I can't... casts the spell. I can't... The spell magic is not a thing, right? It's not a it's reaction. Right. It's no, an action. It's who's who's oh, plane shifting away? The elder elder brain. Brain. I can't. I'm I'm in the ethereal plane. Can I counter spell from the ethereal plane? No, right? No. Uh, no, you can't because object people in the ethereal plane can't interact with people in the material plane and vice mm. versa. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, I mean, it wants to get the fuck out of here. It believes its life is in danger because it thought it was protected and then there's a hammer there and then it sees a fucking angel there that walled unshotted one of its orcs. So it's like, yeah, no, bye-bye. Um, so it spins away. DM, can I choose to end Blink? Um, on your turn, I think the... not during okay. this happening right now. Okay. Uh, I don't even think you'd be able to see this, because creatures in the ethereal plane can only see up to 60 feet. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> it just barely misses what you can see right now, so you don't even see this happening. Mm. It's like, you don't know what's going on. It's just getting the hell out of here. That's true, no, so Dante wouldn't have any reason to choose to end Blink. So, it disappears from everybody's eyes. But this is a good thing. This is a good thing. You didn't want it to be here anymore as well. So is the connection severed still? I mean, or is this connection still active in another plane? What you remember Cephalos said is once it's from away from this plane, its radius for control it's is five only miles. five miles. Yeah. So all of the illithids are renegades right now. Including the one in front like that's in front of the planetar? Including that one. Oof. Okay. Yeah. So this is an interesting point right now. So that's the end of the Elder Brain's turn. The Planetar turn. Its last order was to attack this one, so it's gonna carry that out. What? <laughs> I know, it's funny how sometimes your orders backfires, yeah. Here oh no. It's 12. 
Okay, that's the lowest one is 15. But that's still good. 15. The highest one is way higher. It's 25. It's AC. 15 also. Okay. So both will hit. I copy paste the old command because that's a ridiculous amount of dice. 55. Ridiculous. Is it? Oh. 52, that's 107 damage, just like that. It looks Ooh. like a heavily injured... <laughs> injured. <laughs> it's, it's just gotten released from its, like, um, psychic bonds, and it's just like, what the fuck? And then a planetar hits it over the head. I know. That's so sad. Okay, I think that's the end of the planetar's turn. The planetar, after putting two huge gashes in a cross-marked position on the illithid, you're pretty sure it lost a couple of its long tendrils. It's like floating down and squirming on the floor. It's like, Ew. the next time will be your last, boy. <laughs> The Illithid's like, oh well, shit, yeah, I don't want to have that happen to me again, so it's going to cast Plane Shift to get the fuck mm -hmm. out of here. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. That almost brought him down, though, holy crap. <laughs> well, that's oh. one enemy left. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we don't have to play. We don't have to carry that out anymore, because all of you are just gonna dispatch it. I think. Yeah, yeah we, you know, not even a question. Uh, we will. I will scorching ray it on the sixth level. You know, like. <laughs> that's not I did. No reservations anymore. Okay, so I'll give the five minute um, epilogue. Then I'll get more into detail after Sean has left along. So, okay. at the end of all this, the orcs are indeed free because um, the Balbros and Esma, they were able to carry out their mission successfully by being both the loudest and also freeing the orcs. They automatically succeeded in rallying the orcs because Esma was kept alive by the Balbros. Nice. So there's that. Um, some of the Illithid like opposed to how the elder brain ran things so whichever ones you could find that weren't already killed by the orcs they decided that they'll be following cephalosk and it's really just a handful like you don't see you don't even see like a lot it doesn't reach five even oh so it's four <laughs> well something like that less than five okay. we'll go with that yeah and then uh, like after that they kind of like form their own group in a sense so now Cephalosk is thankfully not alone anymore oh good yeah. so there's that and then what else um the orcs they're still hunting down illithid they're trying to eradicate all of the ones that held them down so that's still going on there's going to be a large scale skirmish from the orcs to the underdark they may or may not encounter drow and they may or may not encounter duergar but one thing's for sure they're hunting down um the mind flayers right now okay yeah then the flumps the flumps are okay you actually see them on your way back because i think <laughs> you all want to see them one more time before leaving. I, the I want to see them one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, they're very pink. They're very pink and glowy right now. They're very happy that things have gotten better in the Underdark. And um, I think you would have allowed it to consume some of your thoughts right now, especially considering your victory. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like shares in your victory right now. Yeah. Quite yeah sharing the positive vibes um the planetar by the way <laughs> planetar is asking for you to pay in gold oh so, yeah um, that was only like a minute of combat i would say so you oh so that's not so bad you only have to dish out 1k oh easy peasy lemon squeezy 
So like, oh, what's I'm just, one cave? <laughs> yeah. I'll just use the, uh, the creation spell. <laughs> but can it be real money that you create? Well, precious metals for an hour. Oh, come on, that's not permanent, though. And you cannot lie to this guy. He's like, hey, that will disappear in one hour. <laughs> come on. Oh. Well, I have fabricate. Does that work? Fabricate is also illusion, isn't it? <laughs> Let me check. <think. laughs> you're you're not going to be able to lie to a, a planetario. <laughs> it's an Let's angel. Fabricate. Do we find, how about like, how about the, how about this laboratory of the Elder Brain? Is there any valuable metals lying around? I actually, I'm curious to see because we might see like extra planar metals we could use for weapons. I don't know. Hmm. Really much of that. Because you know that, I mean, Cephalos would have told you this as well, but then like, they don't really collect gold or valuables like humans, like humanoids do. The um, treasure is really knowledge. So you see a whole bunch of knowledge, book, books, texts, um, holy scriptures, all sorts of things. I, I ask Cephalos, do you mind if I take some books perhaps? Or do you wish to hold on to all of this? Let me take some. These are not mine and I do not really have any particular connection to them. Okay. Then he kind of looks like at all of the brain jars, because there are like brain jars. There are brains preserved in jars littered around the place, like in other parts, in other rooms. And then he says, I will be taking these though. And my okay. new friends will need them. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, I checked the fabricate spell. It doesn't seem like the spell, like, I think you can create... It's instantaneous. After yeah. It's not, like, fake or anything. Oh, really? It's not fake? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a create spell that, that, uh, no, that, like, lasts for an hour. But I can create raw materials into products of the same material. So I have seven hundred gold. So <laughs> you're working can... with metal stone or another mineral substance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The quality commensurate with the quality of the raw materials. Let's see, fabricates. You can create any material, fabricate wooden bridge from a clump of trees, rope from parchment of hat, materials you can see, <laughs> efficient quantity of raw material. <laughs> I think what we have to define here is what is raw material. Uh, um, the rocks, the metal, or you know what, I have 400 GP, I'll just give like Sina 300. Yeah, so she can give me 300 and I'll settle up the payment and then I'll just uh, shore it up with uh, Rico when I get back and I'll just uh, yeah. get to work with yeah. um, Fabricate. Okay, and, let... and then the planetar says, All right then, I'll accept this payment and come back for later. <laughs> okay. I'll probably be calling on you again, so see you around. <laughs> I'll see you around later, middle missy. <laughs> Till next time. And this time, uh, make it be a more worthy opponent. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you have a pocket uh, deva that you can summon with a bonus action. Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right, so uh, Sean, you can hop off here. I'll get into Thank greater so detail much, for the others. Bye. Thank yeah. You. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thank Ting you. Thank you. Tea. Bye. Thank you. Link. Uh, Bye. Alrighty, boys. So that was the short of it. But uh, which details do you want me to expound on first, though? Because I think there are some that are more important than others for y'all. Oh. Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. The elder brains are the elder brain is gone. The mind flayer, most of them are gone. Um, Dante, Dante would be too. interested in trying to make sure something like this doesn't happen here again. 
Yeah. Because although they plane shifted away, what will stop them from plane shifting back in the future? You know. Yeah, that's true. However, they don't really have a base of operations per se anymore. A lot of illicit are dead, and the brine pool is gonna be compromised because. Um, you're worried about making sure they never come back, and um, Cephalosk was already ahead of you. He tells you we have to kill all of the tadpoles that are swimming in the brine pool. Mm. So right. he starts getting to work by looking at the pool and looking at all of the tadpoles that it can see. Then he mind blasts as many as he can to obliterate them. Mm. Dante uh, just goes to the, o- the other pools. Yeah, Dante yeah. goes to the other pools. He dips his cane or like he has his cane like really near the surface and then he just, you know, electrocutes it. So the pools just <laughs> and then all the tadpoles just float into the surface. Um, they float into the surface. And then he says you have to be very thorough if even one of these are surviving will become a huge problem for the Underdark denizens in the future. Dante okay. just keeps electrocuting the same pool. <laughs> I will... You have all the time to do this. Uh, what will you do, Rico? I will help too. I will scorch ray the brine pools and boil them, you know? And, uh... Shit. Yeah, I'll also, um... Uh, what else can I do? I will... Yeah, I'll help them by boiling the pools as well. And then I'm also curious, do these um do these elithids or these uh do they have like a weapons room or like a place where they collect like the loot of their victims, I guess? I don't know. Oh, not really. From what you know and what uh, philosophers told you, when they collect thralls or they collect thralls, not really bring anything other than the thrall itself. Mm. If the thrall uh, had weapons, then it would just leave it with its weapons while bringing it back. Okay. Dante and will... since most of its thralls were orcs, the orcs really didn't have anything of value. It's just their weapons and their hide armor. Right. Dante, Dante will also like go through and like check whatever books and scrolls are available and anything that yeah. piques his interest he will read through a bit and then he will put them into his bag of holding yeah same they're collecting knowledge essentially mm-hmm. okay well, it's all sorts of things um for the most part it's talking about the general geopolitics of the outside like Baldur's gate and such so they were planning in the long term to like influence the politicians. Mm, I then, see. You see that there are some books on this on about like constructing schools of wizardry and other famous schools and how lots of intelligent minds gather around here, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have a, I have a question for. Uh... Cephalosk and the other elephants. Maybe they might know something. I um I asked them uh um I I asked I'm I wonder if any of you three, four of you lost count. How many of you are familiar with uh a mythalar by any chance? Does that ring a bell? Think about it for a moment. A mythalar, a mythalar. Uh, I'll let a lot of them roll with advantage on this one. So, here we go. Oh, I think that'll do. So, one of them kind of pipes up and says, a mythalar. I think that I have seen this in one of the memories of, an, of a person that I've eaten before. A okay. mythalar. You would have to go all the way into the desert in the heart of Faerun for that. That is, after all, where the ancient empire fell. Yeah, the floating... Ca- uh, Dante says, 
you speak of the f the floating palaces, the floating castles. Indeed, it seems you are familiar with this one. The Encephalosus, indeed. He is, after all, a very intelligent wizard. Then he kind of like uncontrollably shakes one of his um, his tentacles. <laughs> so gross. Um, you notice the other ones are also kind of like in uncontrollably shaking their tentacles. <laughs> but then they're like, no, 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 we have to keep them alive. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's a very weird situation. It's like you're conversing very like um gentleman like, but then they just so want so much to eat your tasty brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Indeed. I tell them, um, okay. um, um they do say that that is the only thing they know about Mythalars, but one of them pipe up and say Well, there's one other way for you to achieve what a Mithalar can do, if what you're interested in is floating. Yeah. The Mind Flayers, you see, the Illithid you see, we have this device called a Nautiloid. Okay. Uh, and then he kind of goes into great detail about what a Nautiloid is. If you've ever seen like Baldur's Gate and the ship that they use for the Mind Flayers, that's essentially an Otteloid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then also says that that's like one way to traverse through the air and also through planes. And he also shares that if you're interested, there's also this thing called a Spell Jammer. But we haven't seen one in a really long time and wouldn't even want one because usually spell jammers are with the gif. It's like, ugh. Okay. okay with the gif, yo. <laughs> I see. Is there a way to. Okay, do you know where I could find the Nautiloid perhaps? Like. Is it, um... Well, we haven't seen one in a long time, and in fact, we were trying to discover or rediscover. How to create one again is part of our grand design. I see. Okay. I guess I'll have to uh, rely on... Would you happen to know by any chance if even a shard of the Mithalar is enough to float a small vehicle? Or do I have to have the massive orb that is the whole okay. Mithalar? They all say in unison, no, you only need a shard for it to make something as small as a ship hover. Ah, okay. Okay. You just need a Mithalar shard. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it says, hold on a minute. We have shared yeah. knowledge and we would like knowledge in return. This is Aphalosk oh. saying. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Would you like Do you happen to know anything about the Lichdom? The Lichdom? Well, I am. I personally spoke with the Shadow King, Larlock. And uh, I try not to, like, mention Dante, like, you know, like, work for... I didn't want to, like, make Dante, like, talk about, you know, Larlock for himself. So I just say, tell him, like, oh, I personally met Larlock. And, uh, yeah, he was... Uh, he was uh, a strange man, but we got along. We had... Uh, our priorities were aligned at the time. So, yeah, we... I did meet, like... One of the so-called kings of the lichdom. Why? Interesting. And he ponders with his kind of like newfound counsel for a bit. And he says, We would like to meet this shadow king you speak of. It is essential to our change that we'll make in the future. Okay. And, uh... What would you, what would you have me do? 
Oh, we would just be interested to meet him. If you can bring us to him. They want us to arrange a meeting. Mm. Yes, exactly. Um... I think... Could I ask how exactly will the liches help you in your change? They are notoriously quite disagreeable, what with uh, killing, you know, living people and reanimating them. Well, that is precisely why we need someone as powerful as that. Someone who has, has power over life itself. We are going to change our lives. We need someone with that kind of knowledge. Power. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I think the Encephalos also does make his intention clear. He intends to live for much longer and also not need to feed on brains. Ah. Uh... Uh, yeah. Like he'll need to get that power through lichdom. I see. Hmm. Yeah. Very well. I could. I could arrange a meeting. I ha I'd have to get the lich's attention in, in his in his abode and if he's interested then maybe he will allow me into his lair and hear me out but uh how may i how can i contact you you are we are quite far from the lich's home like i uh, if you have a device perhaps that i could communicate with then i could arrange the meeting smoothly you know yeah, he's got no such device. Instead, he'll ask you, "Where is this? Uh, our, where is this Shadow King's domain? Warlock's we'll crypt. wait nearby." He lives in Warlock's crypt. Ah. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I show him like a map and try to like help him. Like it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then he'll say, "I will be waiting for you nearby." Then, okay. Then he kind of like um, will this. He'll try to learn this spell called this guy's self, so that he can, he can like walk around no problem. Yeah. Uh, the other illithids though, they're gonna have a problem because none of them are arcanists. I uh. I tell the elephants, um, if you if you give me enough time, perhaps I can purchase hats of disguises for the rest of you. And then, listen, if uh, if you're expecting me to arrange this meeting, I also expect that we would be fervent allies after this. You know, so it's a show of good faith. I will purchase hats of disguises for you and. So you can travel safely out into the surface and have this meeting. Is it uh does that sound good? Well also actually a bit taken aback that you would consider being an ally with him. And then he says Well the Thids do not have many allies nowadays. It would be nice to have a god as our ally. And he asks you, kind of like in doubt you certain you want to be allies with us you are some of the smartest creatures i have encountered and i have interest in allying myself with well with intelligence so yes i will continue to be allies with you however if you give me reason to think that you are harming innocent people then that alliance will will not will no longer be. All I ask is, I I fully encourage you to change your ways, but I don't want to do that at the expense of innocent people. That's all I ask. Follow that, and I'm more than happy to be allies with you. And then Cephalos kind of chuckles and says, "How about evil people? How does that sound?" Well, you're free to terrorize and consume and exploit evil creatures. That's fine with me. All right. 
then him and the rest of his Illithid kin nod in agreement and say, then that is fine with us as well. Today okay. forth, we shall be allies with Red Knight. Okay. There you go, dude. Thanks. That's one story reward. You have allies in the Underdark now. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay. This makes it so interesting. Now you have a foothold in the Underdark. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Alrighty. So there's that. And then um, Cephalos looks at Dante and says, Dante, you are one very interesting fellow and also a very skilled wizard. Hope that in the future we can spend more time together. Um, Dante thinks. In his head, he says, Cephalos. Hmm? Um, uh, does Cephalos respond or? Yeah, he says, yes. Dante will then think. He might have Bishop on your side. But I've had many encounters with other creatures who like to delve deep into my mind. And I must tell you, I do not appreciate it. Just the mere fact that you were able to respond so, so quickly when I thought your name already is a red flag to me. Can you repeat that? Because I'm a bit confused as the DM. <laughs> uh, Dante is just being uh, very apprehensive and very um, like reluctant and hesitant about this alliance. Uh, the only reason he's not saying no to it is because in his head, he'd rather keep his potential enemies close. So... Dante continues to think while Cephalos is uh, oh. communicating. Oh, yeah. Did you think? Do you think that he heard your thoughts? Is that what you thought? Yeah, because I said, I said I thought Cepha like Dante thought Cephalos. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I misunderstood that. You were just thinking. Okay, you weren't saying his name. Okay. So Cephalos oh, is not in his head right now. He's just like, uh, um, you know, think he's just waiting for you to respond. Like, I'd like to talk to you more in the future. And then you're not saying anything. So he's like, oh, he's, a, he's a weird creature, but then he seems oddly patient. But he's just waiting for you to respond. Ah, okay. Uh, Dante just nods then. Okay. So you say, he says, uh, so that's a yes then. For now. Look forward. Look forward to it. It's interesting to see somebody so talented like yourself. I'd like to learn the ways of wizardry that you, just like you do. Dante is just turning away now. <laughs> All right. Um, he doesn't know anything about your not wanting to be controlled, so he can't really talk about that, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's gonna be the end of that. <laughs> okay, and then, uh, also Rico, yeah. um, I think at this point you all separate ways. I mean, he and his pals, they're going to be avoiding the orcs because the orcs are bloodthirsty for illithid blood right now. So they kind of take a different route that goes different from where the orcs are. And you kind of see for the first time that they are able to levitate, so they use that to their advantage. They go kind of go vertically up in a different pathway. I, uh... 
I tell them like meet me at a specific day so I can, in the forest so I can hand them their hats and then they can you know go meet <laughs> Larlock if they want yeah they tell you that uh, well, there's not really a way that you can talk other than through sending. Yeah. Yeah, sending is probably the only way you're gonna be able to communicate with him. And he does have sending, actually, so he tells you that. Uh. And he says, I will let you know when we are there. I will okay. let you know where to meet us. Okay. Farewell then, my allies. And he leaves with his illithid kin. Nice. Um, you you meet up with your battle barrels and Sina, and Esma mm. is also very thankful that you were able to help out as much as you did. And, yeah. Uh, they actually brought some good stuff with them too, because apparently they encountered a bunch of Duergars. Mm. Those Ooh. newer cars had some hefty amount of shit with them. Nice. Indeed. So, you all will get, and I guess you'll be converting jewels into gold so that you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. So, here are the list of rewards. I'm going to be posting it here. Rewards. Battle Bros and Asma, they were able to gather much Ooh, let's see oh, then wow. also you all level up there so yeah. you're all level 14 now yeah 9000 oh gets divided by, by five five uh, up to you. Esma is not really interested in the money. She did keep all of the food and the good weapons, though, because mm -hmm. the orc, the orcs will need that. So divided by five: okay. Dante, Rico, Sina, the Battle Bros. We got yeah. one thousand eight hundred each. Mhm. Mm Great. Yeah, not bad at all. Then we level up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. And uh, I asked the the orc, uh, you know, how oh, they're gonna hunt down the rest of the elephants. You know, that's what they said. Yeah, the Esma and the other orcs made it very clear to the battle bros and to you all that they're gonna be killing every single one of them that they can find until the last one's dead. Okay, that yeah. that works for us. Yeah. Yeah, totally, man. Especially the ones that still want to be part of the hive mind. Yeah. Those ones are probably dead, man. Although there are probably quite a few of the renegade illithids that didn't want to be a part of that that are now dead. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it comes with the territory, man. Just messy like that. So there you go. Okay, so a couple of other epilogue things. So, Dante, I guess for a while, because there's going to be a few 10 days after this till the next adventure. Um, let's see, I guess you would report back to other Harpers, like what have your activities been? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be interested to learn more about this illithid arcanist because like that's really interesting they also want to keep an eye out for creatures like this if its intent is really make things better as they say yeah i expressed to them my worry about uh illicit the illicits and the illicits wanting to ally with Sh with larlock uh, Dante is just expecting manipulation from either one of them to the to each other, you know. Indeed, and then they say that's precisely why we should keep an eye out on them. For now, it seems that that friend of yours, Rico, does not see anything wrong with allying themselves with them. 
And they are no threat so much right now, but we will keep an eye on them. Mm. Yeah, Dante just st stays quiet. <sighs> so, so uh, I mean, the. What do you call this? Both your higher ups of the Harpers, though, does say. I'm glad to see that you're able to both defend the Citadel of Strategic Militancy and also deal with a potential problem. And they kind of deliberate for a moment. Dante, if you're able to do the other task that we gave you before, finding um, Arturo Maro, it's time for you to be promoted. Ooh. Dante just Nothing. ducks his head. And Dante knows that uh, despite how long he's been searching and uh, exhausting his options, uh, he has not found any trace of Arturo Maro anywhere. Correct me if I'm wrong, DM. Um, found any trace through your own means. Not so much. Like, you followed the leads and they always led to dead ends. Right. And he hates to admit it that uh, that, like, last conversation he had with Larlock when he talked, when he said about the another, uh, about another Maro. Mm -hmm. And then he hates that he thinks that might be an option he has to try. So, but Dante doesn't express this. He just, you know, after ducking his head, he just, you know, looks back up at uh, the rest of the Harpers, and then he he nods and says, "I'm, I'm getting close." <laughs> he says, "Very good." Well then, I'm hoping to hear something great from you in the coming month. And then, he just so. says, right. and then he says, and then he says, Godspeed then, and be careful. We don't know what Maro has been up, what Arturo Maro has been up to lately. And based on his sudden disappearance, it might be no good. Uh, Dante just turns away and walks out of there. Alright, and the other uh, one walks away from there too. Yeah, while Dante is walking away, he's 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 like feeling the ring on his finger with his thumb, uh, the ring that uh, his grandfather gave him, Arturo Maro gave him, and he just mutters to himself, uh, "What are you doing?" And walks out. What Arthur Amara is doing is a huge mystery to everyone right now. Yeah. He Be doesn't so much to others, he, he he doesn't like that the Harpers are suspecting uh are having suspicions uh against him and antagonizing him a little bit. <laughs> But then, like, as far as the intelligence is concerned, it sure seems that way. I mean, it's at this point that Dante kind of, like, knows the story, at least from the perspective of the Harpers, what happened in the Maro family home when Darfin was rescuing you and your brothers and sisters. Mm. Yeah. So, the version you get is that... Um, Dr. Amara was hiding the fact that your family were dealing with demons mm. and that um, oh, like the the Harpers got tipped off by one of the higher Harpers one of the high Harpers mm. but it wasn't even a high Harper at the time it was still the, the one before that the position before that mm. yeah is it Wise Owl? Yeah, it was Wise Owl. Uh, the 
wise owl only known as N. Yeah. Don does Dante know that moniker N? Uh you got the moniker N because of the person who gave you this mission in the first place. Got he it. kind of gave you the gist of the background. Like these got are it. the events that happened. And da Dante knows that N mentored Darfin and uh uh, Linda, although Dante hasn't met Linda. I've never met Linda, so anything you know... Actually, no, they wouldn't even mention that because the person who gave you this assignment didn't think that would be an important okay. detail. Okay, got it. Yeah. Alright. So, yeah. Uh, you know the moniker N, but you don't really know the connection yet between him and Darfin. Got it. And you don't know who the fuck Linda is, so there's Got that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So, yeah, that's like the only thing you know so far, so... Yeah. It doesn't really... Like, you don't know everything yet. Mm. A lot of questions. So, Dante's just gonna, you know use this opportunity that the Illithids have brought onto the table, uh, them wanting to meet Larlock as, you know, also his opportunity to ask him about Arturo Maro. Uh, but he's not telling anyone about it. Uh, okay. I mean, Rico might, may or may not know about it, depending on how you want to do that. <laughs> Oh uh, no, Dan Dante's just gonna say, yeah, let's introduce the Illicids to the Shadow King. Ah, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Alright. Sige, I think we can start off from there. Or maybe we can even have a separate session for that. Someday. Because I think this only concerns the two of you mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cinnabar and the others may or may not be interested. Fatal might be interested though. It's like, oh, it's a lich! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, maybe we will have a session from there. And then Dorothea, Dorothea kind of has news for you, Rico. Ooh, what's yeah. up? <laughs> He kind of like tells you through sending that we're going to be, I'm going to need your aid very soon. Wrap up whatever you need to wrap up and then meet me in my palace, you know where. Okay. Oh man, next session is probably gonna be roleplay heavy actually. <laughs> All right. Let's make it a roleplay heavy session. I wonder how everyone else in the party is gonna react to seeing Larlock. <laughs> All right. I'm just, I'm just there, like we know each other. You know we're cool. <laughs> the last time. Oh yeah, you were cool the last time. Although Larlock is still a bit sad that Dante doesn't want to, you know, <laughs> his powers anymore. Mm. Boy, Dante up for promotion. This is really nice. You also did a really good thing that the Harpers would have been proud of. Yeah, the the only thing that's biting or like bothering Dante is why we're allying with slavers. <laughs> but. Kinda, he's just, he just, you know, puts that in his head. Like, it's better that I know what they're up to rather than we make them enemies and they go into hiding again. Yeah, I mean, that is, that was or is still their nature. Like, that's really how the Illithids were and are for the most part. Mm. But, um, I mean, I don't think anyone did, ever did an inside check or whatever, but then, as far as you can tell, he's very genuine about the fact that he wants to change change how the mm. Illithids' bodies work and how their entire race works. Mm. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. 
Me too. I never thought you would ally yourselves with a mind flayer, but there you go. I, I, I was thinking, you know, like, they could be useful, you know, like, the apocalypse happens, maybe they can help. <laughs> <laughs> the apocalypse happens. Oh, dude, can I tell you, I was so, like, holding my breath whether that the big elephant could mind control the planetar or not. No, oh my god. The planetar doesn't have legendary resistances, by the way. So if it's... If it gets, if it fails, it's gone. It's like it's not your ally anymore. Um. <laughs> Man. Oh, that would have been a 180 kind of fight. It's like I would have, I'd have kept yelling at the platter. Please, just go home. <laughs> no, it's like right after casting Planar Ally, you cast Banishment on it. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. Oh guys, how's it facing off the elder brain? That yeah, was uh, that was fun, but I Hang was on. also like, I should have killed it. Yeah, I mean, I role played it. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I apologize, my energy level is a bit low. I've been having a rough week. I'm kind of sleepy. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. That was episode 3 of Plucking Strings. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that, uh, please continue watching. Check out the other videos on the channel, whatever. Uh, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.